What's going on, everybody? It is Coach Greg Adams back in here with another YouTube live stream. Shout out to the Coach Gang. And that's you. For being in here, being involved, and being active on this YouTube channel. And welcome back to the Wake Up Show. Part of the Free Agent Lifestyle Podcast here on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel. You in here with the Bruce Wayne of this ish. New, new, new world the order. king of kings, the king of content, and the speaker of truth, yours truly, the notorious one, new, a.k.a. New, new, Mr. New, Coach Alini. Better known as the prognosticator, Coach Stradamus. And you're in the desert storm bunker with none other than EWF. That is every woman's fantasy in the whole effing show. Also known as the CEO Nigaro of Fix His Binds, LLC. The Unbinder. The Undebatable, the Undisputed. Best edutainment here on YouTube. They also call me Senor Gregorio Greybeard. The ladies love to call Your me third, Mr. Third Leg Greg. Your third leg was just phenomenal. Also known as the man, better known as Senor No Trabajo. You can also call me the junior college sociologist, the black professor X, the black, the Morpheus of the Mating Matrix, the chocolate if Confucius, also known as the black Moses, the deliverer, the man that walks in the spirit of Elijah. I got so many nicknames, more nicknames than anyone in the game that I can't even remember them all, but you can call me CGA for short and at BC, God Allah. And the 10 time demonetized champion of YouTube. All right. The Black Professor X, the Chocolatist. How many more nicknames do we got right here? The Great Coach Alini Koo. Yes. People are like, where are you getting these nicknames? Yes, the Great Coach Alini. All right. Yes. I got that nickname after I did I go to Italy? I think I got before I went to Italy. I was the Great Coach Alini. All right. But anyway, we got a great show for you lined up today. A wave of adult. Female, female superstars, as they call them, pornography stars, have been facing defeat as the days of our lives continue to roll on. This year, 2024, we've lost at least four to five and up to eight adult female superstars, not including, not including OnlyFans girls that have lost their lives. In various means, some self-deletion, some allegedly armed robbery and deletion, homicide as they call it. Some have been put into a coma for eating disorders, essentially. The night of the living base head. And much, much more, many, many others, self-deletion. And we got to go check into why these adult female stars are dying. I mean, even this newspaper article here. Um, is uh, looking at, oh, what, what is going on? I got my link right here. They're asking why all these girls are dying. We're going to investigate that, and we're also going to hear from Chris Brown as he has been connected to one of the young ladies that has self-deleted. Yes, or allegedly self-deleted. I have no idea. And so we're going to check in on that. But it's enough for uh, this news pr publication right here, as you see on the screen. It says, porn stars deaths. Why? Are so many women dying out here, man? How why why they dying? All right, they was getting their binds fixed, but why they dying here? And uh, there it is, right there, man. And we're gonna highlight even those right there. There's a, they always be dying. All right, the streets are cold out here, did you? In these streets, it's an evil world we live in. It's an evil world we live in. Yeah, it's gonna be a long ass show. <laughs> you thought it was me? I thought it was me. All right. Who feels bad for the young ladies that died? Anybody? I mean, listen, I wouldn't wish death on no one. Who feels bad for the young ladies? Well, we're going to find out the adverse effects of working in the industry. Uh, you know, listen, I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. I grew up everywhere. And then just be like, where else didn't you grow up? All right. But, uh, you know, my formative years were spent in the San Fernando Valley. That, that is the home of the pornography industry. I mean, it isn't so much anymore, but it was back in the day. And uh, yeah. Um, I know many women that have gotten in this industry, uh, stripping, OnlyFans, pornography. I've come close to these people. And, yeah, there's some side effects long term, and we're going to go over that. We also have Doom and Gloom CGA, Straggle and Snickle Theater. We also have Crime and Law CGA, very lengthy segments. 
So buckle your seatbelt, man. I'm going to tell you, man, we're going for a long ride, and then we're going to talk about marrying for money. We have a woman, an old woman, that is telling younger women, do not marry old men for money. Mm. Yes, old sugar daddies and shit like that. Yeah, man. All right, and to contribute to today's show, dollar sign, the notorious CGA on the cash app, Venmo, Coach Greg Adams TV, PayPal is paypal.me backslash Coach Greg Adams, and that be pinned to the top of the live chat. On the Free Agent Lifestyle channel, and you can super chat on the Notorious New 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 World CGA order. channel. Somebody said I thought it was Chatsworth. Well, that's the San Fernando Valley. Yeah, Chatsworth is in the San Fernando Valley. The valley is is a region, right? And there are cities within the region. Reseda. Shout out to the eight one eight. The eight one eight stand up. All right, North Hollywood, Chatsworth, Reseda, Granada Hills, Northridge. Um, that's all I can remember at this moment. Costa, Costa, uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm missing one. I said Costa Mesa. There's a Canoga Park, Canoga Park. Shout out to the 818. Let's get the 818 a round of applause over there. Yes. Shout out to the 818. I went to college in the 818. Winneka, San Fernando Boulevard. Yeah, all of that. She hid in the bag of chips. Oh, yeah, anyway, anyway. Um, we in here, we in here. Let me get to the earlier contributors to the day show. How about we do that instead of shouting places out? Uh, Albert Wesker says 304's life takes a toll on him. The 304 life does take a toll. And he says, uh, SA women will experience this. Oh, you talking about seeking arrangement women will experience this. Shout shout out to everybody out there. Yeah. Seeking arrangement women. I I think there's going to be some long-term adverse effects for sure. All right, and shout out to Tarzana, yeah, and uh, and uh, Van Eyes, yo, oh, Van Eyes, Sherman Oaks, Encino, but yeah, shout out to everybody there. Um, and yeah, so three hundred four life does take a toll, man. In these streets, uh, they don't see it coming. The money is too good. Shout out to Trevor Hall is in the building. Did I get everybody's? Trevor Hall is is sponsoring the day show. He is. I'm rich, he says man. blessings to you, Coach, paying my tuition. I watched the AI girlfriend stream. He says, make sure you copyright copyright all your phrases. You deserve credit. Hope you do another video on AI girlfriends and sexual dolls and how they impact today's women as additional competition. Well, apparently, shout out to you, cheers. Apparently, the real women can't even stay alive. They can't even stay alive out here, man. So, yeah. Daniel McGee says, hold the line. Free agent lifestyle for life. All right, Abel returns to Eden and says, your analysis of that plain Jane woman with the nose rings was spot on. These average accessible women are the main destroyers of a man's life. They are world enders. He says, ye who enters are without hope. Yeah, needy women. Oh, man, super needy women. Needy, needy women drive me crazy. Needy women drive me crazy. Can I has hug? All right, and, and I want you to do this and I want you to do that. that and, but that comes from insecurity. She's super needy because she knows she basic. And I deserve, and I deserve a man that does all of these things. If you missed it last night, we broke it down. We broke it down. And Trucker, thanks you for your wisdom, free agent lifestyle for life. Shout out to the trucking bros out here. Shout out to the trucker brothers out here. Oh, we all about to lose the stream. I'm about to lose this. Oh, okay, I thought the, I thought YouTube was tripping. Mm. They tripping. What is going on? I'm frozen on YouTube. Well, the Free Agent Lifestyle channel's frozen. All right. Uh, shout out to all the truckers out there. All right. Shout out to all the truckers. All right, man. Shout out to DG Seymour. He says, "What did you say?" CGA just asking for a friend. In a time when women were empowered. He says, why are so many displaying mental frailties? That's a great question. That's a great question. I mean, because I think they're confused. All right, they're quite confused, man. They're confused. Like in one minute, they're super empowered. Another minute, they're a victim, right? In the same sentence, and then they'll justify it. In one sentence, the woman is brave and stunning. Then the other sentence, she needs protection and is vulnerable. In one sentence, she's economically empowered, right? 
And then the other sentence, she's broke and there's a gender pay gap. In one sentence, she's claiming about men objectifying them. In another sentence, she's empowered by objectifying herself. They're quite confused. They're quite confused. And listen, man, and the sad part about it, sad part about it is we have to deal with this. And men are trying to honorably deal with it in a mode of respect. Like a lot of women will do this. They'll be like, we want to be strong, but we want to be dominated in the bedroom, right? This is quite confusing to the normal simp. But when I tell you, stop listening to them because they're confusing. They, they're telling you one thing, but they mean another. Uh, the great Donovan Sharp used to say, whatever they say, they're projecting what they feel the other person should be. So if they're strong and make a lot of money in a, and is a go-getter, then guess what happens? That means she wants a man that is a go-getter, strong and dominant. You see what I mean? It's projection. And they're quite the confused characters. Um, in one minute, they're strong, and then the next minute, they're crying. You know, they're, it's a quite complex individual that you're dealing with. Yeah. But now, the only the true woman can come in and say, hey, listen, <laughs> I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl. I don't need no man, but then these men need to help. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, they're confusing, man. They're confusing, but we try to clear, clear up the confusion over here. We try to clear up the confusion. AC says, shout out to all these brave fallen women. They served their time in, I don't even know what these are, man. Don't even let me, come on. <laughs> don't I can't repeat those. I don't even know what you're saying. <laughs> All right, shout out to J Flo. He says, uh, what was your rate? What was your rate back in your prawn stunt double days? <laughs> Mine? He says, shout out to CGA and the coach gang. When you're young, when you're a young man, you would think like I want to be a prawn actress, like you, like an actor. Ninjas is always thinking with they Johnson, right? So ninjas are always gonna be like. I'll do a prawn like you just thinking you're going to get paid in Punani and you're going to enjoy it. And you're going to think, I'd love to do a job like that. First of all, you can't do a job like that. You don't have the equipment or the capabilities to do a job like that. You, you won't even be able to make it. Hey, yo, chill, son. Hey, yo. Second of all, second of all, is going to get old. And yes, you're going to catch an STI. But they all do. It's not a big deal because you're going raw ski. All right. Nobody wants to watch condom prawn. So you're going raw ski and a lot of skeezers. Number three, your equipment doesn't act right that for that long. It doesn't, it might seem like it's a good job, but you're actually acting. If you ever seen the behind the scenes of, uh, of uh, the making of pornography, it is not that exciting. I mean, you got to be able to perform with many other people in a room. Not many men can do that. And no, nobody wants to see your missionary, uh, missionary prom. Ninja, you're going to have to do stunts. And you're going to be in uncomfortable positions that don't make it feel good. And she's acting. And she's actually out there screaming like a banshee. And she's not being pleasured. She's acting. Okay? Then she's in an uncomfortable position. It ain't what you think it is. <laughs> you got to have yourself ready to go for hours. And you have to be able to finish on demand. Like, you can't just be like, hold on, I'm about to finish. They're going to be like, uh... We didn't tell you to finish. You were like, I need a break. <laughs> you got to be up and ready to go for eight hours. And then we got a couple of scenes to finish. You can't just be like, all right, let me get my five strokes in. Roar. All right. Did you get that on film? Did you get it? All right. We're going to sell a lot of these. All right. That five stroke special was amazing. You're fired. All right. Did you go get fired on the first day? My numbers are dropping like crazy. What happened? What did I do? YouTube is not happy with this. YouTube is not happy with this. Yes. I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to wait, Ninja. You got to wait, Ninja. They don't want you to finish up. You don't get to just finish when you want to finish. They're going to be like, uh-uh. Keep stroking. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you Ninja done finished in five minutes on both. Uh, take one through five. Ninja, you already fired. All right. De Niro Tranquillo came in with the double, double up. Yeah. Shout out to you, De Niro Tranquillo. He said, 
my, uh, met a B-dub a few months ago. She started, I'm sorry, she stated that she wanted something casual. Basically, wanted a F buddy. He says, been making her bus all over the place. Got, he says, a good job. Two fathers, a two father. She just got back from a trip with her other man. She hit me with the cash app request for $1,000 out of nowhere. He says, that's blade work. Wow. Straight to the blade work. So she goes on vacation. She got a couple of guys she's juggling. And guess what? Your rent's due, motherfucker. She broke. <laughs> she broke. Let you get it through your thick skull that Isn't I'm that crazy? Broke. Dead, flat, stony, broke. I've got $3.85 in my purse. Hey, um, I'm letting you know, man. I'm just letting you know, guys. Uh, Women are out here living the best life, and they're broke. Like it's, I don't know how they do this. How do y'all get away with this, women? Ladies, how do y'all get away with this, living like this? Like, I would be stressed out being that broke. When I was broke, I was stressed. And I was looking over my shoulder. I was all insecure. Women could see it on my face. They were like, that ninja broke. But they be running around here broke. <laughs> and not only are they broke, they live in their best life. They be at lunch, brunch, vacation, trips, buying shoes, shopping. <laughs> Car barely on, barely on E, below the E. And they be walking around here like they normal. Like, I don't give a f- Man, they are some wild characters, man. Shout out to Justin O says the BG staying alive. We got to stay alive and they, they can't stay alive. But I'm going to just tell you, today is takeout Thursday, ladies and gentlemen. For the few ladies in here, it is takeout Thursday. Did you we up in here? Let's go ahead and play some girls real quick. Yeah, go. Come on, get the dancing, girl. Oh, Hell yeah, let's go. Yeah, I see you. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness, Ninja. What in the? Oh, the humanity. Yes. Oh, what? Oh, my goodness. Oh, shit. Let's go. Take out Thursday. Get them, girls. Yeah. Let's go. Get them, daddy. Yes, come up. What? Oh, my goodness. What in the world is this? What's she doing? Take out Thursday, Ninja. <laughs> yes. Hey, it's a special day, Ninja. (laughs) What are we doing? Oh, what in the... Hey, this is cold. Oh, the humanity. Yeah, what you doing, Nana? Oh, my goodness, Nene, what is you doing? (laughs) Yeah, get them, girls. It's takeout Thursday. Yeah, come on. Hit it again. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Come on. (laughs) Ling Ling, you're show day today, ladies. Yes, I see you, baby. What is she doing on that pole right there? Let, come on, girls. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, indeed. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Let's give them a round of applause, man. I heard Japan is actually going to make y'all ninja saw. If you planning on going to Japan for a long period of time, they going to make sure you got 10 million yen in income. That sounds like a lot of money, Ninja. What? Oh, the humanity. You want to go get some Ling Lings and show up in Japan for the digital nomad visa. You're going to need to have 10 million yen in your account. Okay, wait. I'm tra- Okay, wait a minute. This is what I'm talking about right here. Wait, 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 wait. Hold it, hold it right there. Come on. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Yeah. Give me that. Give me that. Yeah, wait. Okay, hold on for a second. 10 million yen. How much is that? Okay, I need $68,000 in my account. This is the Immigration Service Agency right there. They told you on Friday they're going to announce a program that's going to start at the end of March. The digital nomads, these refer to people who work remotely while only staying in any one place for a short or midterm. From 49 countries and territories will be able to stay in Japan under the specified activities visa category self-employed applicants are eligible as well they're gonna need to see your money in your bank account i don't know if you know man um i think colombia or brazil colombia or brazil did the same thing all right they did the same thing i can't remember which one and so passport bros be wary about me right here so these countries are clamping down these com- countries are clapping down as to you know whether you're gonna come over here live seasonally retire stay for a little bit you know, they're making it hard, so they don't want broke people coming over to somebody said no blacks allowed. I didn't say it. 
I didn't say it, but they're trying to clamp down on y'all ninjas, man. They like, nah, nah. Y'all ain't bringing your broke ass over here. It was Brazil. It was Brazil. Thank you, man. I think that a lot of countries are going to start clamping down on that. And it, it's not because of the passport bros, but yeah, I mean, passport bros will be affected. So uh, consider that if, when you want to go over there for about, you know, what? For about three months? Yeah. What kind of fuck you give me? I would give a lot. All right. Just to let you know. All right, shout out to you right there. And we do have another Ling Ling that has something to say over here. I think she is in, I guess, Korea. All right, let's shout her out real quick. Take a look at this right here. What y'all think? What y'all think? Give me a quick rating right here. Yes, it's a woman. Mm. What y'all think right there? Give, give her a rating, one to 10. What do you got right there? She's definitely some young ho. I mean, some young girl. And Greg Fu Young approves. Greg Fu Young approves here. Uh, and she's of age, so you can she's she's not a baby. All right, what do you think right here? This is a Korean young lady. Give me a rating for this one right here. She's a good looking girl right here. She's a good looking girl. Uh, what's your ideal type? What's your ideal type? Uh, what it is right here. Let me go ahead and play what she has to say. You currently dating someone right now? I'm in single for so long time. Why? Maybe I studied really hard in my art high school, so I've been really long in single. As you see, I'm not pretty. Oh, she says she's not pretty. What kind of fuck you give me? She says she's not pretty. Oh, man. We got an insecure Ling Ling. Meow. She says she's not pretty. Greens, they like skinny girls and you're skinny, so you're pretty. I'm not skinny. I am on my diet. Oh, my goodness. She said I'm not skinny. Oh, what happened? I need to make it over to Korea. I actually have a Korean chick that I see from time to time. And, yeah, it's real. What kind of fuck you give me? <laughs> All right. College girl. She's a nice one. She says she's not skinny. Oh, my goodness, man. In America, she'd be skinny. I work out really hard. I'm not pretty in Korea. She said, I'm not pretty in Korea. Oh, man, ninja, I need to get over to Korea. Oh, what? <laughs> She's not pretty in Korea. She lying. She lying. Boy, I tell you, man, we got some interesting taste. She said nobody wants her in Korea. Okay. Oh, man, it's tough. American women, you thought it was tough. She... <laughs> She come to America and clean up. She clean house. Well, she clean a lot of house, too. What's your ideal type? I don't really care about appearance, but oh. I do care about height. And so I really care about personality and some style, clothes style and music taste. It's really important. I really love rock, hard rock. Oh. Some like 80 or 90s hard rock and some new metal. Since I'm an art major and I'm really into fashion and I like some street fashion. Uh, man, who cares what, what she, kind of fuck you give man, me? Man, who care what she talking about, man? Ninja, who care what she talking about? I don't care what she talking about. <laughs> All right. Ninja's coming over here, man. As soon as I see her, I'm going to just go ahead and hit her up and be like, hey, I'm going to say, you want to come to America? You want to come to America. You do want to come to America. What kind of fuck you give me? I do. Yes, I got you, baby. <laughs> All day long. Greg Fu Young. Greg Fu Young in the building here on Takeout Thursday. I hope you enjoy Takeout Thursday, man. It's a special day. It's a special day. All right. I guess there's leftover women over there, guys. There's leftover women over there. Real leftover women. All right. Let's get, let me check up over here. Uh, John Ellison. He says, uh, my week of parenting time resumed yesterday and my 16-year-old son came home to see my new vet and he was super excited. You taught me to let him see me win and now I see why. Thanks, broski. And he's going to forever look up to you. He's going to forever look up to you. He's going to remember this day. He's going to be happy for you and you're going to be his hero. Despite the... So despite what the baby mama does and says. And, oh, by the way, your baby mama will be giving you a child support modification. And just so be ready. All right. Hope you did your due diligence of uh, putting your money in your mother's bank account. <laughs> All right. Mm. What was that soccer player that did that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shout out to angry little dude. He says, making money while you sleep. I paid $2,000 in child support. So 
you got to keep grinding. $2,000 a month in child support. Shout out to Jay is in the building. JP says, first time donating, long time supporter on Locals. Shout out to everybody, man. Get over to Locals. I swear, man. It's, it's free to join, but if you want to interact with the live streams, it ain't free. But get over to Locals. The link is in the description box, CoachGregAdams.Locals.com. It's free. Coach Gang be over there. And we do have a Discord, too. We'll talk about that l- later. And uh, he, J Ju, we're going to call you JJ. He says, today is March 14th. It's steak and blowjob day. Google it. I remember. I remember people. I remember the early MGTOW guys talking about it for a long time. So this is the, this is the holiday that follows Valentine's Day. In Valentine's Day, ladies, it is time to drop that neck. It's barbecue in there. It's Korean barbecue day today. Oh, yeah. I need money, says take out Thursday. Best thing next to the money mindset. Gems, shout out to you. We love take out Thursday. We love them. We love you, ladies. We love them. We love them. What kind of fuck you give me? We, yes, we got you. Kevin T says the wordsmith. Shout out to you. That's a new, that's a new nickname, the wordsmith. We put the words together. Oh, by the way, yeah, don't let your son drive the Corvette. <laughs> don't let your son. Tell your son you're never driving this, just so he knows. All right, we do have a couple brothers here. Kalen jumps in here, and then we'll get the show going. Kalen says, what's up, coach? If you were in a position of power in government, either state or no, uh, national, would you legalize polygamous marriages? Obviously, a man's income would have to come into play, but would it be something to consider for you? Um, no, I wouldn't legalize it. I wouldn't legalize it because it, it's going to start a riot, <laughs> right? I don't think polygamy is going to be um, something that is going to be legalized here in America, but people are going to engage in polygyny or some sort of um, sharing of men, but I wouldn't legalize it. Nah, it probably wouldn't happen anyway. Shout out to our brother, Matthew says, RIP to the fallen 304s. Pron affects both the actor and the watcher for the wages of sin is death, but they serve a necessary demand. They do. I mean, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm kind of torn on pornography because the simple se- the simple solution would be saying to say, don't watch it. But I would cringe as to what men would do that can't get that type of release. No government name says I have a slim frame and have trouble building muscle. Um, he says right here, I've been told that I have a swimmer's body runner type. I am thinking about doing some calisthenics to maximize on my body type. Do you, do you have any thoughts about it? Six foot one, 185 pounds. I weigh, I, yeah, so you definitely are slim frame. I weigh more than you and I'm several inches shorter than you. Pause. I mean, I'm almost 200 pounds. I got too much weight. I got too much weight on my body. I mean, I'm in the 190 and 195. I'll be looking at the scale like, damn, ninja, I'm up to almost 200 pounds, ninja. And if you ever saw me in person, yeah, you'd be like, damn, how you 200 pounds? But ninja, I'm built like the. But anyway, back to your question. Uh, he says right here, plan on being in monk mode for the next four years to get my financial house in order. Really honor and respect your, um, honor and respect your, your, what you call your body makeup. Okay, so. You know, people who, that have a certain body type, you can be a mesomorph, an ectomorph, or you can be shaped like a goddamn cow, all right, for the most part. And sometimes it's difficult to be something, you know, everybody wants the opposite. So you want to put on mass, muscle mass, and you want to bulk. But it's going to take a significant, significant effort for you to bulk and change your body type. So be careful trying to do too much where you might even damage or even hurt yourself long-term, your joints, your ligaments, and stuff like that, trying to do something that your body's not capable of. Even if you went through any um, what they call gear, you still could damage your body for doing something that it's not capable of doing. So be careful. All right. Be careful doing that. Yeah. Indeed. He said drink milk. (laughs) You know, you're going to have to put on, you, what, the first thing you're going to do, if you want to change from ectomorph to mesomorph, you're going to have to eat a lot of food. Yeah. Uh-huh. Have to eat a lot of fo- food. A lot of y'all's is cow morphs. Yeah. Some of y'all shape like cows. All right, anyway. 
or elephants. You're going to have to put on calories. Ninja going to have to eat 5,000 calories a day. You're going to be throwing up like crazy. All right, anyway, be careful. Or you're going to need to do steroids. I don't even, yeah. You got to eat like a crazy, bro, because anyway, be careful. But I wouldn't just suggest any of these things. I'm just giving you some ideas, but be, be careful. Don't be what you ain't. Don't try to be what you ain't. All right, uh, where are we at here? Let's get back to the show. Hey, Doom and Gloom CGA is on the way. Let's go. And by the way, if you change your diet, you're going to have to spend lots of money eating. All right, you're going to be eating eggs and chicken, lots of it, and, per- and steak. Pause. Doom and Gloom CGA, man, let's go through these really quick so we don't make the show long. I know y'all have fun for takeout Thursday, but we got to get serious now. Most American adults don't have enough savings for an emergency expense of $1,000 right here. Yes, they're broke. Can't you get it through your thick skull that I'm broke? Broke. Dead, flat, stony, broke. I've got $3.85 in my purse. Uh, and they put a black woman in there for the... Um, For the stock photo there. There you go right there, man. It says, uh, without requisite savings, 35% of respondents say they'd borrow the money either from friends or family's personal loan and or putting it on a credit card. This is the state of our country. And it's not a surprise, but it, you know, our brother just said he got one of his babies that came back and forth from vacation and pinging him with a cash app request for $1,000. All right. If she did that, I would be like, I wish. A nigga would. Yep, and so there it is, right there. That's the dire straits that we're in. You know, we 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 say we say doom and gloom, and we would hope people would be in a better position, but they simply are not. We are in very very treacherous territory. Um, you know, and I've been in that position too. But I thought that I would do something different, which was the free agent lifestyle. I to get my mind straight, I had to go into monk mode and get rid of dating and stop broke dating. Because a lot of people that are dating men and women are out here in these same conditions. I, my belief is this. If you're in this condition, you shouldn't be dating. I know it's far extreme, but it's the truth. And people take advantage of dating. It's not a, it's not a hobby. It's not a hobby. It's not something to do when you're bored. And especially if your finances aren't good. Even the ladies, even women. Because we're equal now, you bish. All right? You shouldn't be dating either if you're out here broke. Because you're out here using men uh, for, for meals, you're not dating, honestly. You're not trying to find a mate. You're trying to find a meal. Mm. Trying to pay some rent. All right, so I wish everybody would uh, try to not focus on dating and pick up and game and, and, and cold approach and, and women trying to fold, find, find a mate, but they're broke and broke in at the same time. We need to get our priorities straight. Get your priorities straight. straight. And somebody said $1,000 ain't shit. And the reality is if, it, if it's a lot of money for you, you shouldn't be, do- you shouldn't be doing nothing but figuring out your life. One hundred percent. All right. What do we got here? Some doom and gloom news. Let's ring the bell here. Janet Yellen. All right. Hold on for a second. We're going to get two bells. All right. Janet Yellen. She's the U.S. Treasury Secretary. She's um, um, in the presidential cabinet of Joe Biden. She said it's unlikely that the market interest rate will return to levels that prevailed before COVID-19 pandemic triggered a wave of inflation and higher yields. Well, I told you, 2019 ain't coming back. Larry Bird's not walking through that door, fans. Kevin McHale's not walking through that door, and Robert Parrish is not walking through that door. And if you expect them to walk through the door, they're going to be gray and old. Uh, well, the, when the money printer goes, skitty pop pop, when the money printer prints $4 trillion, there's no way that we can return to pre-COVID levels. Not on any of these rates. The 10-year bond, the 10-year treasury note, Averaging 2.39 in the decade through 2019 was low by historical standards. It spiked to 5% last October after the Federal Reserve raised rates aggressively to combat inflations. And now it just sits below 4.2%. That's the 10-year Treasury note. But of course, the the interest rate that people want to quote all the time is always like 2.5%. Um, higher than that, roughly. So anytime you see that 10-year treasury note, that's basically what controls the mortgage rate. But the mortgage rate is not the interest rate per se. You can always raise that up. So we're about 6 or 7%. And the reality is, it's not going to get any lower. 
All right, it's, it certainly ain't going to get lower to five. And, and we were at historic lows even when Trump was in office at zero to two percent, which was cheap money. They call it cheap money. So money was being able to be borrowed cheaply. Now, what, what does that mean? That means for the most part, people are going to be priced out of borrowing money or when they borrow money to buy houses or to build businesses and loans and to get loans, personal loans is going to be above 5%. At the low end, more than likely, more than likely, I'm not a professional expert here. I'm just reporting the news, right? And giving my opinion, it's not going lower than 5%. So people that are waiting for the mortgage rates or the mortgage rates or the interest rates to go to below 5% so you can clean up an housing market, it's not going to happen at least for the next several years. And I, that's what I said. That's what I said. I've been saying that. And, and uh, this woman is confirming uh, as such, and listen, there's more and more details that go into this, but I'm just using my prognostication skills to let you guys know. Yeah, Ninja. Merp. Yes. Mm. It's going to be a long ride. It's going to be a long ride. So uh, anybody thinking of buying a house, you're going to buy them at very severely high rates. And if you don't know the difference between buying a house at 5 6 7% versus at 2 3 4%, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you're going to live on the neighborhood where you're paying $3,600 a month of mortgage for the same price house somebody bought five to 10 years prior, and they're paying 1200 in mortgage. It's significant. <laughs> mm. Same house, same floor plan, same everything. And you're paying double, sometimes maybe double and a half, by buying a house today. Yeah, that shit is wild. That's wild to me. Mm. That's wild. <laughs> All right, anyway, we got a lot of other stuff that you can add into that, but we're just giving you the basics. All right, uh, Doom and Gloom CGA. Uh, we got a social. You ever hear what a, you want to hear what a complaining liberal socialist sounds like? Well, let's take you to Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat. Shout out to Tom Likas. And uh, this guy right here is a complaining, non effort giving sack of dung. All right. And he's one of these anti capitalists. And he's going to tell you why here. And let's see. And if you agree with him, let me know. All right. If you agree with him, let me know. And uh, we can see why we're in trouble. Right here. Is it valid initiative to bring universal basic income to Oregon? Oh, no. We don't believe in that. You don't believe in that? No. Okay, why not? We believe in free markets. We believe in getting paid what you deserve. I have 10 years explicit pizza experience, right? Uh-huh. I can't make more than 2 or $3 over minimum wage, even with that experience, because nobody will actually pay what my labor is worth. So how does that fit into your... To my belief? Yeah. Because I believe that if you have a skill that isn't so much in demand, the market's going to pay you in, in direct proportion with that. If you have a skill that's high in demand, let's say Elon Musk, right? Uh, SpaceX, Tesla, stuff that is actually highly in demand, stuff that brings uh, a specific amount of value to the marketplace, then they're going to reward you off that. Okay. How about my bachelor's in environmental science? So degrees aren't um, really as useful as people would think. They're more an authority claim. So okay. It, so then why, then why should, it, why should people go to college? Well, I don't think you they should. Don't who think told, they who should? told you that? I mean, the entire society told me to do that when I was growing up. Yeah. And I went to school and I got a degree. Uh-huh. Like. Yeah. Oh, Ninja Man. Oh, goodness. Look at this guy right here. And you still live at your mama's house. Yes, you still live at your mama's house. And you're out of shape, Ninja. I mean, your whole life is a wreck. And your neck beard is not connecting. Like, this is what happens. You can, you can see these ninjas coming a mile away. And your outfit's not matching. Brothers. Please, please understand, we're in a new day, guys. We're in a new guy. But there's a lot of Americans like that guy. Complaint after complaint after complaint. No direction, misguided and undecided. Well, I went to college and I got a degree in what? Environmental? You ain't got nothing. And he was like, Ninja, that ain't, that's an authority claim. That ain't no skill. What's your skill? I have pizza experience. You have no skill. And then you're talking about you can only make so much money, but then you don't know why. So then you don't know how to get out of that loop. And then you find men like the other guys, you know, uh, puffer, puffer vest guy, all right, a uh, venture capitalist guy, unapologetic capitalist guy. He's like, get a skill, create demand, fill a void. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just run out here. <laughs> can't just run out here. And then he got the nerve to have a clipboard. See, what he's doing is he's trying to get everybody on Loserville with his clipboard. So now he wants to go out and because he's a loser, he wants everybody else to uh, change laws to benefit the loser. Yeah. And that's why we have immigrants coming across the border. And I'm just letting you know, <laughs> 10 years of piece of experience. You got nothing going on, sir. You need to get your ass in gear and get your ass in shape. That's what this, that's where we're at. That's where we're at. But unfortunately, this is the prevailing thought.
He said, why did you go to college? He said, that, uh, my parents told me and the counselors. Did you, when you get control of your life, a part of what life is, is if you see normie people telling you to do something and that same something is not benefiting them, why would you do it? I get it when you're young, but as you age, you should start looking and going, the same people telling me to get a degree, they losers. Mm. <laughs> they losers. Like, look at you. All right, I'm going to listen to you. All right, I used to do this when I was in, in college as well. And the same people that uh, was telling me to get a job in teaching and shit like that, and they were like, I'm a teacher. And I'm like, well, this is exactly why I don't want to be a teacher. Look at your ass. All right, anyway, let's get back to it. Uh, in Mexico, we go into Mexico on a Tuesday, on a Thursday. This Mexican man warns Americans, you're so broke and working in a system that will never benefit them. And it says right here, it says people in Mexico at least have one house, cars, and aren't in debt. Is he right? Oh, man. They... Who thought I'd see today when Mexicans are dissing Americans? Listen, Mexico's not to be played with, but we've always considered our neighbors to the south, people south of the border. We always thought they were less fortunate. We always thought that. They had a disadvantage. We always thought that they were poor, but now they send in shots. The migrants coming from south of the border, from all over the world, they send in shots. They calling us lazy. They calling us broke. They calling us uh, pansies and peasants. Damn, the game has changed. <laughs> yeah, they got to mess with the cartel. That's another thing. But Ninja, we scared of gang members in the government here too. So there ain't no difference. As soon as the gang take up your block, block in Chicago, you scared of them too. But the cartel don't play. But damn, they send in shots? Wow, many Americans have been ditching California, California, North Texas, and North New York for Texas and Florida to save money. But even then, they're struggling with housing and costs of living prices. But and hell, we're going to call them and hell de la Rosa. And hell de la Rosa. Let's. <laughs> Who goes by some name on TikTok went viral for his video about how Americans are losing money. And that's true. No matter where they live in the country. De La Rosa, who lives in Mexico, but appears to also hold a U.S. citizenship, argues that people make less money in his home country, but also spend less than Americans. He says Americans are so broke and they don't even realize it. Damn. Let you get it through your thick skull that I'm broke. Sheesh. Dead, flat, stony, <laughs> broke. I've got $3.85 in my purse. They telling you, Ninja. They telling you, man. They like, yo. They like, yo. The migrants are coming across and they like, man. <laughs> Somebody says, play his skit. He got a skit. All right. I don't even know where it is. All right. It's not attached to the video. Does he have a skit? Yeah, they didn't attach it. All right. I hate when they just try to correct me on something I've corrected. I've, I've talked about for many times. Like, do you watch the show? <laughs> they just don't be watching the show. All right. But uh, anyway, we already done said these things. And then just be like, this and other. like, we've already said that we got it. Ninja, we got it. All right, but uh, they, they're saying, brother, we got it good here. I guess I can't find the skit. Somebody said there's a skit. I can't find it. Nope. Nope. I can't find it. What does he say? Where's the skit? Oh, here it Americans is. Americans are so broke. Oh, he got, his, he got it right here. Okay, I clicked on it. Here we go. Americans are so broke and they don't realize it. Let's go. Americans are so broke and they don't even realize it. I always get Americans tell me, oh, but people in Mexico only make $20 a day. You can get a full meal here for $2. The Metro in Mexico City costs five pesos, which is like 25 cents. I can go to the market right now and buy three kilos of mangoes for like $2. Yeah, people make less money here, but the cost of living is also lower. Americans think that everywhere is like the US. Now, check this out. Let's say you live in the US and you make $3,500 a month after taxes. Mm -hmm. I'm being generous. Rent, 2,000. Mm. Car payment, 500. Oh. Car insurance, 200. Damn. Health insurance, 200. Wow. Phone bill, 100. Wi-Fi bill, 50. Light bill, 150. Water bill, 100. Oh. What's the point of making more money if you don't get to keep any of it? Oh, damn. 
Who cares if you make $4,000 a month if you don't get to keep any of it? 60% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck, and that includes half of six-figure earners. 80% yeah. of you guys are in debt and don't own anything. Mm. And half of you guys don't even have $500 in your savings account. Mm. But let's call other countries poor and let's call other people poor. Living paycheck to paycheck your whole life and being in debt your whole life should be considered poverty. But it's No, it's, it's considered slavery. It's not. And I know this is going to hurt a lot of Americans, but it's the truth. The U.S. system wants you to spend every waking moment of your life working and paying into a system that will never benefit you. Well, he's not lying. He's, he's spitting the truth, Ninja. He, he's spitting. He's spitting. Slaving away your whole life just to be retired for a measly 10 years. At least here in Mexico, we own our things. We own our houses. We own our cars. We're not in debt. But anyways, that's a story for another day. Damn. Okay. Skitty pop pop. Brrrah. Pop pop. Cock cock cock. Skitty keep pop pop. And a pop pop. Boom. All right. Ninjas are saying, yeah, but you live in Mexico. And ninjas live in Flint, Michigan, telling him he lives in Mexico. Mm. But you live in Flint, Michigan. All right. Listen, you guys got to travel a little bit. Flint, Michigan and Mexico, the Mexico that you think is not that far apart the gangs control your neighborhood the weather is bad and the water is terrible okay so flip michigan uh and did you guys see that i think it was because i've been telling you they're trying to raise the retirement age significantly because people are living longer um and i said that uh one of the women i can't even remember her name now she's inconsequential at the moment she was running against trump um nikki haley was trying to raise the age of retirement. But I think Joe Biden or a lot of people in Congress are trying to raise the age of retirement for so eligibility for Social Security. I've been covering this quite extensively, but I think now it's gaining traction, especially in the Democrat, uh, the Democratic Party. And a lot of people aren't going to know that because y'all because black men are dying at the hands of the police. We got one in Miami like y'all. You, you guys don't got to see this coming. But they're now gaining traction to raise the retirement age significantly and having you ninjas work well into your 70s. In fact, I believe um, even people like Ben Shapiro are saying we need to raise the retirement age well past 75 and 80. What does that mean? What does this mean? You're going to be working. You're going to be working. I've covered this extensively, so please thank you very much. I covered this extensively why they're doing this. It's no longer a matter of why, and it's no longer a matter of fighting this. It's already over. They're already thinking that this is going to happen. They cannot support you people retiring at 66 and 64 and 65. They're no longer going to be able to do this. So th it, this prevailing thought is starting to gain traction what this means in effect, and they've, I've heard a good talking point on this because they're saying women are having children in their late 40s. I'm sorry, in their late 30s and their 40s, which means these children, I mean, these, these late parents are going to have to work. They can't retire at 65 because the kids are barely going to be um, moving out of the house or at least adult age because people are having children. Late. See, there's always an adverse effect to the things people do. So not only are people having and getting married and having children late, they also have to continue to work to support those children well into their 60s, early 60s. So with that being said, these kids are going to be going off to college or college age or working age, and they're like, you ain't going to retire. Your ass has got to work. So the dream of retirement, we've, I've covered this on Money Mindset. I've covered this on Blue Chip Mindset. I've covered this for years. It's dead. The retirement idea is dying. It's dying. It's done so. And not only that, they're telling you you're going to be working into your 70s. You better get with it, guys. You better get with it, man. This is not a game out here. This is not a game. Yep, the law of unintended consequences. So if, if women are saying, yeah, we'll have babies at 35, 40, well, the kids are going to be what age? You're going to be uh, you're going to be having your babies at 62. Let's say if you have two kids, you're going to be parents until 60s. And they're saying, well, you certainly aren't going to be in retirement mode. You're going to still be having to earn income, man. Wow. Hey, man, remember, man, remember, I try to give you this information for you to do your own due diligence. Uh, so you're not shocked because playing from behind is actually ridiculous. Remember, I've talked about these subjects for years. And when I talked about it and just thought it was conspiracy theory.
<laughs> right? You're doom and gloom. You're conspiracy theory. Now you're seeing the normies, the senators, the governors, the president, presidential candidates running with this. They're running with this as prevailing thought. So, yeah, man, get ready, Ninja. We're entering into a new day. And they don't rest. New, 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 new world. We're order. entering into a new day. All right, that's Doom and Gloom CGA. All right, we got it going on, man. Do me a favor, hit the like button. Hit the like button. We in a new day. You'll go back and look at my videos from years ago and you'll be like, damn, this ninja said this was going to happen. I told you 2019 ain't coming back. We going into a new day. We've already close as just as close to 2030 as we were 2019 by the end of the year. We'll be that close. We'll be closer to 2030 than we are from 2019. So I think by the middle of this year, we'll be closer. It's time to get ready, man. And, the, and really, there's no more money left, right? So the, the, the whole system of money and finances, they're skimming from you. In my opinion, I'll say it like this. I don't want to get in trouble. New, 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 new world order. They're stealing your money. All right. Now, whoever they is, who is they? The money's being taken. <laughs> right, listen. Mm. <laughs> yeah, the U.S. debt clock. I, listen, we, I've been showing you this for a minute. What is it? I told you that the Fed, the Fed chairman said this is unsustainable. Now, I've been showing you this for years. It's unsustainable. There's only a matter of time. And, the, and, and the, the people that know, they're taking the money right off the top. They're taking your money and moving it around, claiming they're putting it here and there, and they're not. They're, they're taking the money. So that's what's happening. And in real time, we're adding trillions of dollars of debt in real time. And they're printing out $4 trillion of debt. That's, that's what's happening. That's what's happening. And anybody that wants strike jacket, if you want to deny it, deny it. You want to deny it, deny it. Keep making your $60,000 a year and keep paying your taxes at 20, 30, 40% tax rate. And then wondering why your money's being shipped off to these places. But it's being funneled back. Just they know what's up. They know what's up. <laughs> right? The money ain't there. It is what it is, man. Listen. All right. Anyway. Buying $15,000 staplers and shit. Man, I'm just letting you know, bro. You need to get on board with this. All right, what are we doing here? Kaylin says, Coach, have you heard of a prime star name? I'm not going to say her name. She took her life at in 2017 at age 23 due to a tweet she posted that was believed to be homophobic. He says she also suffered from bipolar disorder. The prawn industry is not an easy one. No, it's not. It can't be easy. We're going to talk about the sign effect. I, I think I'm going to cover her, but I don't know. I got a couple of names that I'm going to mention here. I'm trying not to. What I try not to do is mention names of prime stars because too many simps watch my show. And then as soon as I mention a the name, they go Google him. <laughs> did you, did you want to share with me? I'm like, Ninja, I didn't ask for pictures. I didn't ask for anything. <laughs> All right. Kevin Taylor gets a cult sponsorship today. I'm red, like, red. if I don't have a deal, I don't look. Ninjas is Ninjas is mentioning them in the stream. You see how fast? You see how fast? I try to not mention women. I try to not even show you their Instagram if I show you their Instagram, but because I know how men are, and what'll happen is I I know what happens. What's weird is I'll show a video of a woman. Somehow you'll trace her Instagram and then I'll still get video su suggestions from the same person's Instagram where I was getting no suggestions from this Instagram, but I show a video and then somebody keeps, oh, here's another video by her. I don't give a fuck about this woman. <laughs> All right, this is crazy. I don't care about her. Like, damn. But, you know, the adverse effect of the red pill the red pill has changed. You know what I mean? Like, I try not to market women at all. But, you know, some of these red pill consecrators have capitalized on marketing women. And they out here pseudo pimping these women, <laughs> making money off of y'all. I try to do it the healthiest way. At least I try to be healthy and not send you to hoes because I ain't got no deal with these skeezers. These skeezers ain't making me no money. 
These geezers ain't giving me no views. So why would I say their name? I don't want to say their name. Jesus. Anyway. Shout out to Miles. M says, hey, coach, I have my girlfriend listening to you for the past few shows. She can be a hater sometimes, but she respects your message. Shout out to her. I don't expect any woman, any woman to actually watch me and agree 100% of the time. And I will say, listen, if any woman can sit through my show without having a conniption or jump out of her skin, all right, well, she's an honorable woman. She's an honorable woman. If she can listen to my show and multiple shows without jumping out of her skin, yeah, I'll give her credit. All right, I'll give her credit. No government name. SD says your college scholarship discussion made me think of articles showing the men and women on the Howard swimming team as national championships. He says when you read the article, it's only the men's team that won it. Why show the women? Wow. They tried to sneak that in there, didn't they? They tried to sneak that in there. Oh, it was only the men's team. Mm. Yeah. Yes. I mean, listen, that's more propaganda. And I will say for the women, for the women that watch me, men, there's, there's many men that can't watch me without getting triggered. So if a woman can make, watch me, because there's simps that watch me and they be going crazy. There's men that literally wait till I fire up my stream so they can bring a monkey ass over here and hate on me. <laughs> right? So, and we got almost 2,500 people watching this show between the two channels. I appreciate y'all. Do me a favor, hit the like button. But there's men that can't watch me without getting triggered. So for the ladies that can watch me and listen and, uh, and actually um, the, the ladies that watch me and agree with most of what I say, I'll meet you at the end of class. I'll meet you at the back of the classroom. All right, because you might be in shape here so I can get you in the CGA 52-point inspection program, all right, where I check the oil. I kick the tires, check those feet, look at the tread, get the whole facts out. You know what I mean? I check from bumper to bumper. I do the bumper to bumper exam. You know what I mean? I check. You know what I mean? I probe all of the areas that need to be probed. I check that oil, you know, check that oil. Let me see what we got going on here. I got you. I got you. Give you that 52 point inspection. So come on up, ladies, at the end of class, back in the classroom. I got y'all. We got you in the back there. You're going to have to sign a couple pages of a non-disclosure agreement. But we'll fly your ass out. Come on out here. I got you in the back. Yep. Yep. Drop the dipstick in there. Let me see how. Okay. Let me. Okay. Yeah. We got it. Yeah. Uh -huh. We got you. Very good, ladies. Mm. Attention, all ladies. I got you. <laughs> anyway, right here, let's get let's get back to the show. Thank you, man, for the early contributions. I got to do Straggle and Snickle Theater before we get too far behind. Let's do it. All right, we got Straggle and Snickle Theater. Let's go. Hey, ride with me if you ride with me. You can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast sticky. You can get high with me. That's a deal, right? All right, Straggle and Sniggle Theater, let's go. What do we got on the first Straggle and Sniggle Theater? We got uh, when that EBT hits. Wow, the EBT hit out here, and she's in Costco. I didn't know you can use EBT at Costco, but take a look at all of that junk food that she got. Man, ladies, Straggle and Sniggle Theater, look at this Straggle, man. And this is unfair because I can't even afford to fill up a basket that mightily. But she's living off the government dole. Man, these broke beaches out here be going crazy. Having all kind of kids by all kind of men and then wanting a stepdad to step up and then using the government to buy all of this junk food. No shame at all. No shame at all, man. Like, you should be ashamed of this. This is crazy. All of this cardboard food. All right, this ain't even food. I don't see not one veggie, not one, you know, not one sandwich meat, nothing. Nothing. Not nothing healthy in there. Nothing, nothing but colors of brown. All right. God damn. Oh man, what is this, man? Like, wow. I didn't know Costco took EBT. 
This is crazy, man. I had no idea. New, 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 new world order. Just stealing. Just stealing. All right. And she digging in her nose. What are you doing, man? Got all them crump snatchers loading up your shit. She got enough to pay for tattoos, too. She all digging in her nose. What's wrong with these straggles? No shame. You should be ashamed. We need to go back to the Monopoly money. We need to go back to the Monopoly money when you didn't go up there with your little card. Go up there with that funny money looking shit where your your dollars are green, blue, and pink, and yellow. That's where we need to go. Embarrassing. <laughs> Embarrassing. That's why they fat. <laughs> they mad in the comment section. They mad in the comment section at her, man. Like, this is a disgrace. Like, nobody should have this type of advantage. There should not be this type of advantage where that person should be able to have that much food and the average American can't get that much food and on a regular shopping trip. Mm, goodness. All right, Straggle with Snickle Theater here. Wow, we got the ninjas out here like in the old ladies. Well, of course, these women are like the old ladies. What area is this? This looks like a nice southern area. This looks like somewhere outside in the middle of Tennessee. Look at that peach right there. Mmm. Mm. Okay, let's hear the skit right here. Let's hear the skit. Oh. Damn. Okay, so the volume is low. Miss Maven. Miss Maven? Oh, Miss Mavens. Okay, she the old Miss Parker next door. She got her hair sleek back, no eyelashes, no weave. Boy, she plump. She plump. She got that booty, man, them biscuits. She an old Southern lady. Oh, little just, boy. Just to check on you. Oh, I always gotta come. Oh, my. Oh, my. I'm going to keep coming until I get what I want, woman. Mm. I'm always. Oh, yeah. Damn, Miss Mabin. Yeah. A Southern. She built like she from the South. She built like she from the South. All right, I see what she what she working with right here. I need me a down-home Southern woman like this. I need me a down-home Southern sister. Where y'all at, you country-ass bumpkins? You Bama. I need a, I need a light-skinned Bama like this. Where the, where the brown-skinned Bama's at? <laughs> I know the sound is low. I can't help it, man. I can't turn the sound up on the video. All right, but it was a ninja starving for Miss Maven. All right, look at her, man. Where's the down-home Southern woman? I need a Southern woman like that. That can cook and preserve peaches and pears and shit. Mm. He was just, he was just, who don't care about the audio. It was just a ninja starving. Cornbread-fed-ass, Southern-ass skeezer. Yeah, I mean, not skeezer, lady. Where are these girls at? They in Tupelo? That definitely looked like the country to me. I need a country girl. <laughs> I need a country girl. All right. Yes, indeed. I need a girl that can make me chicken fried steak, chicken fried chicken, put gravy, biscuits, and gravy for the morning. Where are the Southern girls at? Let's play the video. And she got her feet out. Little boy, oh man, I tell you. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> where they at? It, where they at? I want to know where them women at. Them Southern. I need them Southern. He said, now I like black women. No, nah, listen, man. I don't like strags. <laughs> Come on, man. Get it right, brothers. I've ver I made it very clear who I don't like. Now, just because most black women are strags, don't blame me, Ninja. Don't blame me. It's a mentality. It's not. It's a mentality, brothers. All right? It's a difference between black and strags, like blacks and niggas. That's, that's a difference. I don't associate with niggas and hood niggas. Like, stop, stop with the racism. I'm not a racist person. You're the racist. I don't mess with strags. Now, most black women tend to be strags, so, but that's, that's neither here nor there. I need me a southern black woman. Yes, indeed. Give me, give me a, give me a, let me at her. <laughs> Ninjas be out here mad. All right, come on, man. Don't be mad at me and stop. Stop being racist in my stream. We don't deal with racism. <laughs> come on, man. Get it right. 
Then just be out here trying to quote my philosophy and getting it wrong. Coach hates black women. No, I hate strags. All right. I never said I hate black women. <laughs> I said I hate strags, and I've been very clear about it. Strag, no straggles. I have a no straggle, no baddie policy. Now, just because they almost seem to be what black women are, that you, you're throwing them all in the pot. Now, just stop. I need a sister, so you must be my sister, so you must be my. <laughs> all right, anyway, let's get back to the show here. Uh-oh. We got Young Thug approaching somebody's grandmama. Here we go. I get your number. You already married, sweetie. Huh? I'm married, sweetie. You're supposed to use me to keep you young. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you want to tell that to my husband? They ain't got to do it. They ain't got to do it, huh? Might as well. Let me see that phone. Put that number in there. Man. <laughs> she didn't got serious, man. I get your number. Look at this ninja, man. What? Well, Brother starving. Yes, sir, brother. Oh, man, I know you're not picking up granny. And I know granny didn't put that number in there. You know, these these grannies are nasty, bro. These grannies are nasty. Yeah, that brother's starving. <laughs> yes, sir, brother. All right, so he in the bind, she in the bind, and he going to stroke her to death. I'm going to just let you know. And this granny, she might look like somebody grandma, but don't let don't let the uh don't let the gray hair fool you. This woman is a nasty woman. She been nasty since she was an AKA back at Mississippi Valley State in the Deltas. Mm. Yeah, she used to be a nasty girl on campus back in 1983. All right, she used to put it down back in 1979. Back in 86. <laughs> back in 86. Yeah. And ninjas is out here starving for grannies. Yeah, that brother's starving. Are we cold approaching <laughs> grannies? Okay. That's what we doing, huh? Okay. Yeah, she got to wear a diaper. But, hey, man, that's just a little piss. Don't worry about it, man. That's just a little piss. You know, when a woman has many babies, they can't just be walking around here without having a little bit of dribble in between their legs. You guys don't know that. But she leaking, the extra leaking. She wanted. She like, let me at her. All right, look, she going to give him the phone number, too. You already married for this. Huh? I'm married, sweetie. You're supposed to use me to keep me young. Really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you gonna tell that to my husband? Oh, you gonna tell that to my husband? She looked up with them eyebrows up. She was like, oh, really? <laughs> young buck. And don't be mad, because I actually had that white woman in Covington, Covington, Tennessee, was out there with 12 to 17-year-old young boys. So don't think she won't get out there and get her back blown away. You know what I mean? They ain't gotta do it. They ain't gotta do it. Oh, he don't got to know. Ooh, uh-oh, look at that. Oh, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We must stay focused, brothers. We <laughs> must stay focused. She a freak. Look at that look right there, gentlemen. This is why you can't trust married women, man. Look at that look right there. That's the look she give you when you, when you working it from the back and she look back at you <laughs> with that look. <laughs> She's like... <laughs> You don't know what you playing with, sir. She's like, you don't know who you playing with. I will break your ass in two. She will have that ninja shaking. <laughs> All right. She was like, my husband might not. She was like, oh, my, what your husband got to know? She looking back like, oh, really? Oh, ninja, I'm going to teach you a thing or two. This the candy lady back in the day. She used to take ninjas back in the back. Come on, get some candy, boy. What you want, little boy? Put y'all little boy narrow asses in here smelling like outside. Come in here and wash up and wash your hands and get some candy and get some fruit. Yeah, this is the old one right here. Yeah, she got that old Fanny Willis gorilla grip right here. Mm. <laughs> she got that Fanny Fanny Willis. Let me look at that Fanny. Yep. She's starving. <laughs> she got flashbacks from back in the day. Yeah, that brother's starving. Oh, my Lord, Ninja, the nasty boys are here. Oh, that's nasty. All right, she a little tiny one, too. <laughs> she got a bum knee and her arthritis be acting up, but that's all right. She'll put that gorilla grip on you. you might as well let me see that phone. Put that number in there. Oh, look at her, man. Oh, man, she was ready to go that fast. Man, these women weak out here, bro. These women weak. They weak in the knees. Straggle with Snickle Theater. We have a young woman here who does skits. She definitely has a large following. And uh, I can't play. Let me see. I guess there's music in the background, but I can't play it. 
Um, this is a Ling Ling since it is takeout, takeout uh, Thursday. <laughs> this Ling Ling says, when your friend is ranting about a guy, but you know she is the problem. Yes, indeed. Yes. Uh, a lot of women know these women for sure. And I'll play a little bit of the music just to add a little bit of effect. Indeed. Yes. Uh huh. And ladies, you know, you know this about your female friends and your cousin and your sister and your niece and your mama. It's always the man's fault, right? <laughs> All right. Turn that music off. Turn that damn turn that damn music off. It is all Jermaine Fox. It's always Jermaine Fox. Yeah. <laughs> she looking at this bitch like, and this is why women never get out of Delulu. This is why women can't handle the truth. Is because even their female friends, they never set them straight. They never set them straight. We all know a woman like this. All women are like this. Yeah, this is an instant that we can say. All women are like this. She looking like, bitch, <laughs> you know good and damn well that you cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> and this woman just lying her ass off. And he did this, and he did that, and he did this, and he a deadbeat, and he, uh-huh, and he didn't do this, and he didn't care about my feelings. All right, she like, yeah, bitch, yeah, bitch. Mm -hmm. All women are like this. Oh, man. <clears throat> and even men do this. Be like, <sighs> she don't realize you actually the problem. It's actually you. Shout out to Takeout Thursday. All right, we got how many more straggle and sniggles here? I think this is one more. Um, have you seen the meme, this woman here? She's been doing a lot of uh, videos, and uh, she's an actress. Just so you guys know, she's an actress. So she's been doing a viral video maybe, of taking their baby daddy back to court, how I spend my baby daddy's 500 month of child support, and um, my three kids are by... I'm getting a divorce or I don't let want to let my ex-husband know that the three kids are not his. So we're living in an age where people are monopolizing or monetizing very tragic subject matter. And they're going viral because they fit talking points and narratives. Right. And so these her hers fit the toxic baby mama terrorist. She's a toxic baby mama terrorist online and she's gathering a pretty big following. But a lot of people send me her videos and they're like, look, and everybody thinks they're real, but they're not. She's just acting. She's 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 satire. But we've gotten to the point where satire is being treated as real. And then in the comment section, the normie is going at it at these skits. So I'm going to play one of them, but please don't send me any more. She's I've already investigated her and researched her. She's just completely satire at this point, And she's preying on people's feelings. Uh, with these tough subject matters. So here we go. Uh, baby daddy is taking me to court. Okay, let's get the volume up. Here we go right here. Please don't send me any more of her videos. I just got served. My baby daddy's taking me to court. Like a sheriff came to my door and served me with this right here because I didn't let him see the kids. And at this point, I'm just tired because I know it's his little girlfriend, Ashley, that's behind this shit. Because ever since he got with her, he's been filing motion after motion after motion. And I'm here to tell both of you because I know they're watching. Look at what I'm gonna do with this. That. Because one thing is to not like me. And another thing is to try to drag me to court over some false allegations. Y'all really have been trying it. And the only reason why I didn't let the kids go over there is because I know you don't like me. And I'm never going to allow my kids to be around people who don't like me. Because if you don't like me, how can you like my kids? If you don't like me, how can I know that my kids are safe under your care? If you don't like me, how can I trust you with my precious angels that I carried for nine months and birth? I feel like we could have discussed this over the phone. All right. And so obviously the broken glass is a part of her skit, but shout out to her. I'm not trying to diss her, but it, you can see this is a part of her, her thing right here. This is, this is what she's becoming. Sorry. This is why she's becoming famous right here. Panda, oh. Of course. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But it says right here, realize I'm about to lose everything. My military husband married me, made me a stay-at-home mom, is a good father. But it says, oh, wait a minute. It says, but I'm about to tell him our three kids are not biologically his. And so th these are the skits that are being produced by content creators. And they, you know, what happens is then the red pill guys get it. And then you send it to the content creators and these content creators make a video and the video goes viral, but she's doing satire. Okay. So 
You know, this is, I've, I've been warning about this day. I've been warning about this day. We won't be able to tell what's real and what's fake. And it's hard for people to do it because they don't investigate. They just kind of go with the emotion and they argue and do say what they got to say in the comment section. And girls, the women say what they have to say. And it is what it is. I don't mind skits. But what I'm worried about in the next few years is that you won't be able to tell what's a skit and what's real. Now, it does allow for a conversation to happen, which is fine with me. And I'll use it on Straggle and Sniggle Theater. But I won't try to use men's emotions and say, look, look at this bitch. She crazy. You want to see? I won't do that. And a lot of content creators are going to do that. And I think that's when the red pill is going to have a problem because you're using obvious satire as a real life situation. And then you, you hype, you get these men saying, yeah, man, we need to do something about this, but it's obvious satire. So I, I'm hoping the content creators have a little bit of responsibility when they are presenting these viral skits and you put her on the thumbnail and it's completely fake. I hope you address it in the video, but people really don't. But I hope content creators will be a little bit responsible because we need to attack the real issues, not the skits. We need to go with the real issues and what's really affecting us and not take a skit and then say, look at this bitch. She fat, ugly, goofy, single mother. And she and really, she's just entertaining people. And, uh, you know, these content creators, the other content creators, I can't help. Look at this. <laughs> like, what? Look, look at this. Yeah, man. <laughs> look, she throwing her titties on this. <laughs> can you see that? I don't know if y'all can see that. She, like, this is where it's going. She literally throwing her titties on the table, man. Yeah, bro. How your baby daddy's girlfriend thinks you act when he comes to pick up the kids. So that's her lane. Her lane is, her lane is to uh, talk about the baby daddy the baby daddy, baby mama dynamic, which is entertaining. Oh, man. But listen, that's what people were talking about. Yeah, somebody said COINTELPRO. That's what people were talking about. Yeah, now it's going to get people hyped up because the comments are proving that people cannot tell it's satire. All right, so um, anyway. Anyway, 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 that's Drago and Sniggle Theater. Hey. With me, if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the five sticky. Come get high with me, that's a deal, right? <laughs> she threw her titties on the table. She threw her titties on the table. Oh man, <laughs> come on, brothers. <laughs> we where are we going now, ladies? Objectification, we throwing titties on tables now. Okay, all right, shout out to um Jay. Trade says today is National Steak and B job B job day. It's barbecue in there. B job day. It's barbecue in there. Ladies, it's B job day. It's barbecue in there. All right. Shout out to viewer discretionary affairs. He says I don't date black women, but I love straggle daggles. Only for peace leave though. He says I will be Sukihana's next baby daddy. LOL. Oh. Mm. All right, Sukihana. Oh, the humanity. Mm. You like bed wenches. You like bed wenches. You know, we all like toxic women. <laughs> toxic women. Janissary. Sorry for mentioning the name, coach. Yeah. All right. Ian Slater says, happy P.I. Oh, it is Pi Day. Happy Pi Day. It is 314. It is Pi Day for our fellow nerds. LOL. Shout out to the nerds and the geeks. And the, um, there was a nice little guy. He did a, he did a, um, he did a Venn diagram between nerds, geeks, and I think like social predators. I can't remember what he did, it, but he made a good little um, thing about the difference between nerds and geeks and emotionally unstable men. I can't remember what the third one was, but yeah. Shout out to the National Pie Day, 314. And Juicy Work, Shaw, damn, pause. He says, Coach Gang Yang in the building. Shout out to the Coach Gang. Trang Yang. Vince Dean says, I knew the world was com uh, changing when I saw ninjas arguing in the comment section of prawn videos. <laughs> he says, get in and get out, bitch ninja buzzer. Mm. For real. Was it dorks, nerds, and geese? Oh, I can't remember. Can't remember. Uh, yeah, man, the, the comment section is just, you know, it's, it's unbearable in many, many instances of some of these videos. And, oh, by the way, the woman that I showed you in um, the woman that I showed you, I, I looked through her TikTok 
because I was trying to figure out if she's satire. She actually announces at the top of her TikTok that she's satire. All right, so I was like, I appreciate that, and I'm wishing, hoping content creators can do that. So she announces that she's satire. Then I saw her doing several advertisements for companies. So she has some sponsorship, which is, I'm all fair game. It's content creation, okay, content strategy. So she actually has sponsors, and she'll do sponsor ads in the middle of all of her skits. So I'm like, hey, man, she's showing you what time it is. She's showing you what time it is. Um, Cali West Miami, before she became old enough to be the candy lady, she was young enough to be the wife who used to freak the milkman. Shout out to the coach gang, free agent lifestyle for life. Indeed. Yep. Many married women was 304s, man. A lot of y'all be marrying 304s. And by the way, I don't mind skits. I'll show skits all day long. But what I won't do is say, and use it as a feature and say, man, these women are committing paternity fraud. I won't use it as a feature. And say, this woman has ha, uh, had paternity fraud on her military husband. I won't do that. But a lot of YouTubers are going to do it. They're going to put her right on the thumbnail, and they're going to make a video, cut it up, edit it, and then at maybe in the video they might mention that it's a skit or satire. All right, but again, you know, people are weird. Shout out to No Government Name says, I can't believe that there are men jealous of other people's relationships. Is it because they are lonely or jealous of the success? This is what ends friendships with men. Price is wrong. This is true. Male jealousy is actually lethal, more lethal than female jealousy. Male jealousy is one of those things that is it's weird to me. Like, I can understand why a female will be jealous. And all men have this envy. Everybody has envy in them. And, you know, I wish I was that. But how men exhibit their jealousy is actually weird, right? They'll do it in a variety of ways um, that is weird. And it seems toxic <laughs> where you can understand a jealous woman. But a jealous man lashing out at a man... That should be weird to me. It's weird. And I'm like, why y'all doing that, bro? <laughs> like, why y'all, why y'all mad? Why, why, why do men get mad at other men? Like, you'd be like, damn. But male jealousy is something else. And men be acting like 12-year-old uh junior high school women. Even in this red pill industry, there's some ninjas be acting like some content creators be acting like 12-year-old girls. Like, damn. Now, I get a sneak this here and there, ninja, but they just be out here. I want to debate you. And then when they debate you, they, they gaslight you and call you names. You're like, like, bitch, is this junior high school? Is this high school for real? Like, I can see an honest debate where we sit down and, you know, sit there and talk. But ninjas be getting in the debate. Oh, I don't even know what your name is. I ain't never heard of you before. <laughs> like. Stop. Stop. And I never even heard of you. What's your name again? And then want to tell you everything you done said. I've seen a few of your videos. Now, that's me. I might not know what your name is. Or I might forget. I might honestly say I'm bad with names. But ninjas be doing some weird shit. Like, y'all be doing some weird 12-year-old 12 <laughs> 12 shit, man. Weirdos. I mean, men, the jealous men are just, y'all need to do, we need to do something with jealous men. For real. Anyway. I want to debate you. You get on the debate, them ninjas be going crazy on the debate. That's why I be like, I'm not here to debate no men. You need to debate me. He's scared to debate me. I would, I would smoke him in a debate. <laughs> like. <laughs> and then you get on the debate. Ninjas be talking about bonobos. Ninja be talking about weird ass statistics. Ninja be talking about you can't get bitches. Like, is this a debate or are we dissing each other? Ninja, we could go no Vaseline all day long. Now, I don't want to go no Vaseline because that's really low grade shit for me. But if you want to do no Vaseline, I don't know why we're talking to each other. When we could just come out here and lay down diss tracks. All right, but. Ninjas be debating OnlyFans whores and shit like this. Now, nah, I'll be like, what is going on? <laughs> oh, man. Beware. Y'all be wildin', bro. Y'all be wildin'. Yeah, these some fruit booty ass ninjas. Pause. Yeah. Hey, yo, chill, son. 
Hey, yo. The debate never goes the right. The debate never does anything. The debate never does nothing. It never. Nobody ever says, you know, now that you presented that thought, I halfway somewhat agree with you, ass ninja. Men never leave high school for real. They don't. <laughs> right. It's great. Wow. Uh, shout out to A.A. Ron is in the building. Thank you, man. You said nothing, but it is what it is. Thank you, mother. I appreciate you. Oh, man. Yeah, ninjas be doing some wild shit. The young guys don't know what no Vaseline is, I guess. Mm. I guess the young guys don't know. Man, the young guys don't know what no Vaseline? Yeah, oh, man, look. There's a lot of young guys don't know what no Vaseline is. I guess y'all young. Tell these ninjas what no Vaseline is. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, ninjas don't know what. Yeah, boy. Okay, so I guess we got a lot of guys under 30 in here. Hmm. Sad. Man, y'all need an update. Y'all need an update. Y'all don't know what no, va no Vaseline is? Wow. Sheesh. <laughs> He said, I don't want to find out. Ninja, wow. No, no, no. You guys don't know what, no, wow. Got a lot. We got a lot of young guys in here. Okay. They're just talking about sex. It has nothing to do with sex. Wow, my God. Just, just Google Ice Cube. It won't even make sense to y'all ninjas. <laughs> All right, anyway. Okay, I have to do something uh, more modern. Uh, what was Drake's diss song? It's a diss track. Oh, God, my God. All right, anyway. I didn't realize I had that young of an audience in here. Okay. It's a, it's a hip-hop diss track. It's one of the most famous hip-hop diss tracks in history. Okay. All right. Let me, let me, let me move on. Okay. <laughs> ninjas was going These same ninjas was going to clip my no Vaseline and be like, Coach talking about some gay shit. Okay. All right, boy. We didn't have, I didn't realize we had so many, so many youngsters in here. Yeah, I have to say back to back. Okay, I have to go back to back on these ninjas. I have to go back to back, back to back, back to back. All right, I guess y'all understand back to back. All right, I should have said no Vaseline. I should have said back to back. All right, got it, back to back. Mm. Now, shout out all the Gen Zers in here who went really over your head. Ether, I should have said ether. All right, maybe I should have said ether. <laughs> all right, shout out to all the non-hip-hop heads in here. Let's get this one sounded. Where's my sound effect in here? Drake jacket. It's a diss track. It was referring to a diss track. All right, I got one more. Shout out to Deshaun Rose. Just watched the AI girlfriend video coach. I hope they come out with the Cynthia G model so I can show her what a real misogyny is. All right, he says, anyway, hit the like button. Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Cynthia G. I don't really know who that is. <laughs> All right, there's too many... G, Kendra D, Kendra G. Then there's Cynthia G. Then there's, there's another one that got sued. What was her name that got sued by Cardi B? Like, I get them all mixed up. I wouldn't be able to pick either one of them out. What was the other name? Maybe I'm referring to the same woman. There's a Kendra G, a Cynthia G, and a the one that drink Tasha K. Like, <laughs> like. All these women are, the, just so you guys know, I don't watch a lot of content. The content I watch is kind of what I watch on the, I don't, I wouldn't be able to pick none of them women out, just so you know. Tasha K, Cynthia G, Kendra D, like what the hell? I don't even know. They all sound the same. Simone B, I can't tell any of these three women apart. So whatever you talking about, I don't even know what the fuck. Who are these women? <laughs> right anyway they all the same to me so just so you know all right let me get back to the show here what is this crime and law cga okay okay we can do it crime and law cga i know of these women but i i don't watch their show enough to be able to distinguish all three of them they all the same all right uh anyway <laughs> he said they all smell alike i'm pretty sure uh crime and law cga here we go Cowboys quarterback goes on the offense. Dak Prescott sues a woman over alleged $100 million extortion plan. Damn. 
All right, shout out to our brother here. You know, he didn't get a win this season, but um, it's good to see men fighting back here. Shout out to the Dallas Cowboy quarterback. In the lawsuit, Prescott says a woman tried to extort him by alleging he sexually assaulted her after his rookie season in 2017. All right, shout out to Dak Prescott. Look at him. He's filed a lawsuit against a woman who claimed, um, he claims tried to extort him out of $100 million. And it says right here, the suit filed Monday in the Collin County, Texas, names the woman who made the claims as a defendant as well as her attorneys that seem to be two women. And they seem to be two one of these right here. I'm not going to say what race, what people, we know I can't say that. Uh, this case arises out of a blatant attempt by the woman. And why do they name the woman? The woman's not even named here. She should be named and her legal team to extort the plane of Dak Prescott by weaponizing patently false yet heinous SA allegations with no basis in reality. I'm glad he's fighting back. He ain't going to get nothing from him. Maybe, maybe from the attorneys. Maybe he's the attorneys. And it says right here, uh, it says Dak and his lawyers are trying to be bullies and play hardball and victim blame. All right, we are not afraid of the truth. So what's going to happen is Dak Prescott is just going to pay a lot of lawyer fees to to, to save his name. This is why men don't fight back. This is why men don't fight back. But that's crazy, man. I just think, I just think that, you know, guys get these allegations and they simply just pay the money and let the lawyers get their fee and let the hoes go off and buy their Range Rover and buy their clothes and these hoes spend up the money and, and, and whatever. But at least that Prescott's fighting back. So I do appreciate that, but nothing's really going to happen because now the lawyers of the woman who are two female lawyers, they're like, game on, good. We can make some money. So the lawyers are going to make money. Anytime you get into lawsuits, lawyers are going to make money. All right, it's never about the truth. It's never about innocent or guilt. Guilt. It's about lawyers making money. And I wish people understood that, but hey, it is what it is. All right, it is what it is. Probably nothing's going to happen. But Rick Pitino once fought back, and he actually won. But again, if you're fighting a woman that's trying to get a bag off of you and extort well, then she's broke. What kind of judgment do you seek other than to try to clear your name? All right, I don't even know. But I do want to announce, just so you guys know, and a lot of people won't know this, but only this is inside information. Since we're talking about Des Dak Prescott and the C Dallas Cowboys, uh, the Dallas Cowboys have been eliminated from the 2024-25 playoffs already. Already, Ninja. Hey, I just had to announce it. Nobody else knows this, but you probably should be aware they've been eliminated. So I figure we talk about it before we get going here. Coach Tradama said so. All right, just so Cowboy fans don't get excited. All right, I'm, I'm telling you, from the future, they've already been eliminated. All right, let's move on. <laughs> All right, here we go right here. A new video of a woman arrested in an $8 million death ring. Uh... We're going to go over women committing crimes here. A lot of women committing crimes. And um, let's go over this video here. There might be an advert. Video. All right, so this is a video of a woman here. I, I think you guys can see it. Of Michelle and Kenneth Mack arrested in December at their Bonzo mansion. Equipped with its own vineyard and chapel, they rented it out as a wedding venue and an Airbnb. But according to a search warrant, it also doubled as a stash house for a small fortune in makeup stolen from major retail stores across the country, like Sephora and Ulta. This is a top priority for me, primarily because of the safety and security uh, risk that it brings to our team. Ulta CEO Dave Kimball spoke to CNBC's Courtney Reagan about the wave of theft hitting retail stores. The network that she had built across the country uh, was impacting multiple stores. And so by eliminating that, it's a step. But unfortunately, I know there's others that are out that are just like that. All right. And so what they're saying is, and I know we've been doing a lot of coverage on these, young, what we assume are young black teenagers. Like sometimes we can't even prove they're young black teenagers, although them ninjas be scattering and skedaddling like they young black teenagers. But she said that what they're saying is these women, that woman and the husband are hiring these, these young black kids or these young kids dressed in black and all this stuff, to rob these stores with specific lists so they can sell them online. She's the ringleader. They have pointed and traced back these theft rings that we blame the community for, and people have been saying this for a long time. they like, white people been behind these things. 
just like the cops are behind some gang violence, right? People don't know that. Because when the gang violence, when the news says, hey, these black gangs are doing this, sometimes it's the police. And that's a known fact. It ain't the black gang members. It's the police stirring that shit up. Sometimes it's the police killing other gang members. Sometimes the police are in the gang. Sometimes hoes that are police women have gang member boyfriends and gang ties. Fannie Willis allegedly have gang ties. So uh, this is what happened. So they tracing it back to this family who they appear to be white. They ain't black. They might be some Latino or some European, but they certainly ain't black. So isn't that crazy? Isn't this crazy? And so they go and sell it on Amazon. Yeah. Three-year-old Michelle Mack and her husband have pleaded not guilty to charges of conspiracy, grand theft, and receipt of stolen property. Michelle is accused of working with as many as 12 women, providing them with a list of items to steal from stores across the country, like this Lens Crafters in Claremont and this Ulta Beauty in Mira Mesa. According to the search warrant, the goods were sometimes mailed to this Bonzo post office and would end up for sale at discounted prices on an Amazon storefront called online makeup store. Stefan says with online stores and marketplaces becoming the new place for criminals to sell stolen goods, there have been some positive steps toward cracking down, like the recently passed Informed Consumers Act, which requires online marketplaces to get information from high volume sellers to help ID stolen goods. But she says there are still loopholes that need to be closed in some person to person marketplaces like Facebook as well as making sure Prop 47 is reformed so repeat offenders are properly punished. Omari Fleming, NBC7. All right, and so when, when they get caught, of course, them ninjas going to get criminal records. But take a look at who the queen pin right here. They put it on the woman. I'm glad they blamed the woman, too, because she's married. They could have easily blamed the husband. Uh, but they saying it's her out here that is the queen pin. She going whole, you know, women, women be running big operations like this, crime syndicates, too. I mean... There it is. They go to, they go to uh, we call them the foot soldiers. All right, they probably made a couple hundred bucks. And sometimes it's inside jobs by the stores too. There's a lot to even unpack. I'm pretty sure if they went back, some of it could be inside jobs. That's crazy. All right, um, speaking of crime syndicates here, apparently a woman um, that is, says right here, uh, a woman that is behind a PPP loan scheme and she's the leader, sentenced to five years in prison. She only got five years. Let's go ahead and see if we can find the picture of the woman here uh, that was sentenced to five years in prison. All right, there's her range. There she is right there. All right, a sister. Sister. So them PPP loans, man, they rounding up ninjas uh, on the PPP loan scam. How much she was getting? $6.8 million pandemic fraud scheme leader sentenced to five years. Let's see if we can get the update here. Defendants have, have had. So she and the co-defendants are and her co-defendants who have pled guilty have all been ordered to pay restitution. Okay. She's responsible for the entire amount of 3.3, approximately $3.3 million. Um, it's joint in several and a couple different ways for, you know, everyone's responsible, but she has a responsible the total amount. Um, the court has also ordered the um, Lexus and Range Rover that she purchased with the criminal funds um, to be seized. So those have been seized yep. as well. I have to imagine that investigations like these are quite complex, right? Yep. There's a lot of parts to them. Uh -huh. How do they even start? Um, they start in a lot of different ways. Sometimes they are anonymous tips that come in from oh, the public. Snitching. Um, there are sometimes um, flags from financial institutions and banks of suspicious transactions. Um, and also sometimes even publicly reported information from, you know, the news. So it's, it's yeah, there's a lot that goes into it. Right? So people watching you, and of course, when you start buying outlandish shit, you know, um, Frank Lucas done told y'all, I think that was Frank Lucas, then told y'all an American gangster, man, don't be out here flossing. You out here flossing, the neighbor's going to tell on you. They're going to be like, mm, I never see them go to work, <laughs> all right? Um, they and you buying flashy shit, it happens, right? And yeah. I would imagine that it's probably a lot of time that goes into you're getting a lead about a particular case, and then eventually you hope to get a sentence. Right? Man, this ninja light in the pants, ass ninja. This ninja definitely walk on his tippy toes. Let's continue here, man. That was a disgraceful comment, but let's go. Right? What right. kind of goes into that? Yeah. Um. So I mean, it, the, our 
our cases tend to, that we end up charging, tend to require a lot of resources to bring them to, to, to the point where they're charged in, in court. Um, and in this particular oh, there she case, go. Paradise Williams's conduct was so broad um, that at some point in the beginning, we had multiple federal investigations open against her because she was using a lot of different deceptive techniques. Um, and, and they be on Instagram fronting, too. And somebody said it. I called it in 2020. I was like, don't take no PPP loans. They're going to send your ass to jail. All right. Because I know people were going to lie on the paperwork. All right. And there she is flossing and flexing. And everybody's like, man. And she probably sold a course, how to get rich, how to hustle, how to do this. And everybody's like, yeah, I need to know how you got rich. Uh, but yeah, it's all by, uh, b behind every great fortune lies a great crime. Different aliases. And so it took us a, a little bit of time to figure out, oh, this is actually all tied to the same person. She got a BBL. Um, and in this case, it actually was FBI Special Agent um, Katie Moran. <laughs> who is an 18-year veteran of the Bureau and investigates some of the most complex white-collar cases in our... Now, I'm going to just tell you, man, if you haven't seen The Wolf of Wall Street, The Wolf of Wall Street, because I'm pretty sure ninjas, they, they, you know, my ex-wife went after my pockets like, yo, this ain't right. And I'm sure she dropped a dime on my ass. Check this ninja, right? Because people want to know. I mean, you start getting stuff in the middle of the pandemic where people are struggling and you start coming up, they're like, uh-uh. So people start dropping dimes. Uh, you do have investigators watching your social media. And they're trying to figure out, okay, does your lifestyle match your income? Does your lifestyle match your tax return? Does your lifestyle match your 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 work schedule? And uh, jealousy, people dropping dimes on you, sometimes an ex-wife or a baby mama that take you to court and they make you uh, put an income, in, in, income uh, declaration and then they match it up with your lifestyle. Man, I'm telling you, bro, these investigators make minimum wage. Essentially, they don't make a lot of money. They don't make a lot of money. So then they get geeked up trying to find they, they get geeked up trying to find you committing fraud and throwing you in jail. So they like, we're gonna come after you. I make sixty thousand dollars a year. You over here making millions and you're committing crimes. We're gonna throw your ass in jail. And that was what the Wolf of Wall Street guy was like. He was like, Man, I'm out here struggling. I can barely, I live in the hovel. Even same thing as um, same thing as um Harlem Knights. Harlem Knights had that same idea where the cop was under on the payroll of one mob boss and they were trying to shake down the other mob, the other gangs, which was the Richard Pryor, Eddie Murphy gang at the um, not the Boomer Room, but at Sugar Ray's. And the cop was like, hey, I'm out here struggling. I need a cut of this money. All right. Give me my cut. You see what I mean? So it's that that's what happens when you out here flossing. Please. People are paying attention and they looking to get your ass hemmed up. Pocket watching. Pocket watching. Yes. All right, what do we got here? Another young lady out here. What is going on, ladies? Criminals. Monica Montrage, Bronx's social media star, pleads guilty to conspiracy charges in a multi-million dollar catfishing scam. All right, damn, what's going on, these women? It is all Jermaine Fox. It's always Jermaine Fox. These women out here, I covered this a few years ago of this woman and this woman was out here scamming multiple men, but we never remember their names. We only remember the Tinder swindlers and the men that dine and dash on women. But these women out here claiming they criminals. Another one flossing on social media with bundles and bundles of hair. And she the thick time. It says Boogie Down Brock's own prominent social media influencer from the Boogie Down has reportedly entered a guilty plea for her part in laundering money from a multi-million dollar catfishing scam that ran for a long time, according to the authorities. Prosecutors say Mona, who had 3.4 million Instagram followers before deleting her account, lived in the boogie down from 2013 to 2019 and helped a group of con artists based in West Africa who used social media texts and emails to lure their victims According to the authorities, a large number of the victims were elderly, single, and vulnerable men and women. The con artist persuaded lonely hearts across America to send money by taking on false identities. A statement from the prosecutors, the federal authorities, stated that Montrage, or Montrage entered a guilty plea to conspiracy to receiving stolen money on February 21st in Manhattan Federal Court. And there she is right there, flossing and flexing in total. Montrose controlled bank accounts that received over $2 million in fraudulent funds from the empire. 
All right, she tried to act like she didn't know about it. According to the docs, she and other con artists persuaded their lovesick targets to assist in bringing gold into the United States from abroad to assist in wrapping up alleged federal uh, FBI investigations and to send money to support U.S. Army officers in Afghanistan. Authorities claimed that before Montrage wired a large portion of her illicit gains to her home country of Ghana, the money was first placed in her bank account in the boogie down Bronx. She allegedly tricked one victim into sending her $89,000 through 82 wire transfers by saying her father's farm in Ghana needed assistance. God dang out here, ladies. Calm down. These scam artists, manipulative individuals, I guess they're getting their comeuppance. They're getting their comeuppance. Oh, man, we live in the scammers. And what did I tell you about women? Women become uh, particularly vulnerable, uh, lethal and manipulative when money gets tight. Men always think, because we always talk about broke women and we laugh and sniggle at them and they're holding their signs and we're like, we, they're going broke. But we also have to understand that women become very crafty and manipulative and especially around sex and emotion. Um, and if you're a lonely guy, you're going to be a target of these women. These women become very desperate. The several women, uh, several of you guys on Locals have been posting about the sugar baby that blinded her sugar daddy in an attempt to extort $2,000. And I've already covered that story multiple times. All right. But um, I know you guys are just sharing it with the group. But, yes, I've already covered that story right when it happened. I think, um, you know, there's been several instances of this. Women do go to the punani. They do go to the punani. They go to the victim. They go to the vulnerable thing here. And ladies, I want you to listen if you're listening to me. This is why men don't believe you. And don't be mad when men aren't trusting of you. And you can't be mad. You can't leverage that. Why don't you trust me? Because I should be able to be investigating everybody. Everybody's able to be fraudulent out here, male or female. Don't say because you're a woman and you have a higher moral compass and why would I do this and why would I lie? Women are the biggest liars out here. And when you're in desperation, men need to have their antenna and their guards up. And for men that use that, why aren't you trustworthy of women? You must be hurt. You always should be investigating. You always should be vetting people. You never should just say, oh, it's a woman. She would never lie. All people lie. All people have the capabilities to manipulate, scam, and scheme. So you should always have your antennas up, especially people who you don't know. You don't know them for a long time. There's no one else that can vouch for them. I don't care if it's a woman, a pretty woman, or whatever. A man, you should always have your antennas up. Especially women you don't know and when money's concerned. Always. That has nothing to do with you being hurt. But especially if you've been victimized by women and those women have uh, um, those women have not found any... Um, I guess, been put to prison or called to task or criticized or shamed or put in prison and you've been victimized by a woman and they gotten over on you, you should definitely not be um, shamed for not trusting women going forward, okay? You shouldn't be shamed for going, I'm going to watch the next women that come into my life. Oh, Ninja, you hurt. I should be hurt. <laughs> yes, yes, I got got once. Fool me once, Ninja. Shame on you. Fool me twice, mother sucker. I need to get the George Bush fool me once clip. But J. Cole might have a copyright on it. Shout out to J. Cole. Don't save him. All right, last story on crime and law CGA. Man, I swear. We have an ex-husband whose wife tried to shoot him. Well, let's just say what I just talked about, about trusting women. Yes, and vetting them, it's going to come back to haunt another man. I got shot when I was 23. I married a young lady that everybody was telling me not to, but I was like, look, y'all don't understand her, our love. So we can get to a huge argument one day, and the first time I tried to leave, she ran out the house and, like, hit the windshield with a shovel and, like, shattered the windshield. Oh, that's pretty bad. <laughs> not too long after that, we get into another argument. So I had a pistol on, on, on deck at all times, so she wouldn't grab it. Like, you're not going to leave this time. You're going to listen to me finish this argument. I was holding our son at the time right i turned to leave she shoots me in the forearm the bullet goes through my forearm and goes across his forehead i'm looking at my son his face is bleeding my arms bleeding i set my son down and i look she's got the gun pointed at my head bro and i'm like okay i'm ready to leave damn man <laughs> pop, pop, cock, cock, cock. well so this is a guy who was shout out to little duval shout out to everybody in duval county 
I believe that's Jacksonville or Duval. They called it Jacksonville. Um, apparently, this guy was shot. This is an older clip on another podcast. I don't know how old the clip is, but there's an update on this case. So his ex-wife tried to shoot him with his child in his arm. Yes, we tell you these women are very evil. When when nobody else is watching, they get evil on you. And then they play the victim. <laughs> oh, it was his fault. It is all Jermaine's fault. It's always Jermaine's fault. Well, she got three years in prison for this attempted deletion, but he's going to give you an update on the woman. Let's go ahead and play the video. All I could do is close my eyes, and all I heard was click. Oh, shit. So then she's messing with the gun. The only thing I can think of, like, if I try to run, she's going to shoot me in the back. So I just ran towards her and just turned into a UFC maniac. Wah, wah. A few months ago, I did a podcast talking about how my ex-wife shot me. A clip of that video went viral. Here it is. Now, if you know that story, you know that I was holding our two-year-old son during an argument. My ex-wife pulled a gun on me, shot me in the forearm. The bullet went through my forearm, grazed his forehead. Then she pointed the gun at my face and squeezed the trigger, and the gun jammed. God protected me. What you don't know is that I divorced her immediately. I got custody of our son, and she did three years in prison. She went on with her life. I went on with mine. Three years. Quick update. She just got arrested for murdering her boyfriend. It's oh. all over the news. A Georgia woman was arrested years after the body of a man was found in an Alabama shallow grave. Oh, no. Long story short, she found out her boyfriend was cheating, shot him in the head three times while he was asleep. Oh. Wow. Pop, pop, cop, cop, cop. Damn. Skitty, keep pop, pop. And a poop, poop, drrr, boom. Y'all didn't just like toxic women, don't y'all? Y'all like that toxic love. Her punani must have been good, good, good. All right, because now she done took out another ninja. Damn, this bitch, she crazy. She crazy. She done killed another ninja, buried his drawers in the backyard with his body. All right, this ninja boy, I tell you, man. <laughs> and how she only get three years for the first one? Boy, they go light on women's sentences right there. They go light on them. All right, that's Crime and Law CGA. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, let me check if there's any contributions that I need to catch up on right there. All right, shout out to Abel Returns to Eden. Says childless monks in their 60s and up don't care if their retirement age is raised. He says we will only ever have one mouth to feed and a house. He says, believe me, we good over here. We good, and you actually took care of your business. Shout out to the childless monks. Deshaun Rose just watched. Okay, I skipped you right there. Abel returns to Eden, but I covered you. Enigma, Enigma. he says, Coach, be careful. Young guys got no musical history. He says, show my son no Vaseline in real mother effing G videos. He says, real ninja-ish, not Drake, LOL. And let me tell you, the young bros think Drake is the greatest. And I'm going to tell you, I don't think so, but he's a good artist. <laughs> but they don't have any history, uh, musical history at all. In fact, um, I, they, they make fun of our uh, 80s and 90s hip hop. You know, so they think Drake is the, he's the greatest musician of all time. He's bigger than Michael Jackson. I'll be like, Shh. Ninja, I don't see it. Like I was around during Michael Jackson and I'm around during Drake. I can tell you they ain't on the same level. <laughs> Ninja. And I can't even put Drake above many hip-hop artists. Now, as terms of record sales and shit like that, yeah. I went to his concert. I took my son. My son likes Drake. I mean, he good. He good. He ain't bad. I mean, I can see why people like him, but I don't see what people are talking about, right, when it comes to it. But hip-hop has definitely changed, but so is music. I mean, I just can't put him in the top five at all. I mean, but he's good. He sells a lot of records uh, and all of that. But anyway. <laughs> Dre Ake, he stole my whole flow. Word for her, word, bar for bar, ass ninja. Carter says, can't, he says, coach, I can't lie. That sounds bad for new watchers with no context. Ninja called them new booties, then started talking about no Vaseline. Yeah, man, a lot of you guys don't know. Hey, yo, chill, son. Hey, yo. Yeah. Yep, you guys don't know. Uh, yeah, it happens. Shout out to Gary Jr. says, got 5K to invest. Any tips? Money mindset. That's the tip that I can give you. I give no financial advice over the free internets. Money mindset, because we got some smart brothers in here that you can probably link up with in our network and that you can have a conversation with. All right, yeah. Shout out to you. 
Be Real Mahogany says here in New Jersey, newcomers are taking all the jobs. He said newcomers. <laughs> here in New Jersey, newcomers are taking all the jobs while ninjas are still waiting for reparations. Sheesh. Mm. Yeah, man. It's, it's going to be a bad time for a lot of Americans. It's going to be a bad time. Because I think, you know, I mean, Americans just don't progress mentally. They don't regress. So they, they try to, like, I hear people and they're like, okay, what are your plans? And I hear their plans and they're talking about doing jobs that was hitting and popping off like 10 years ago. Like, you, it's like, it's like you telling me who are the best NBA players currently. And then just be like Chris Paul, Blake Griffin. And I'd be looking at your ass like, mm. like they were hitting in 2014. You like let me let me do this. Who the best? Put your best fantasy football team together. Ninja be like, all right, here we go. All right, I got it. My team gonna be hitting Eli Manning. <laughs> you be like Eli Manning, Ninja. What? We ain't putting the All Star Ninja today. <laughs> ninja be like Eddie George, bruh. <laughs> so. You got to you got to start thinking forward. You got to start thinking forward. There's a guy that I was going to say that I can't think of uh that would have been funnier. He played he played running back for the St. Louis Rams. Todd Gurley, ninja be like Todd Gurley. Ninja I, Todd Gurley at running back. Like Todd Gurley, ninja. <laughs> Yo, that shit, bro. That team ain't going to win a damn thing today. Ninja be like Odell Beckham. The Baltimore Raven then just be like, oh, Ninja, we got Derrick Henry, Ninja. Watch out. I'm like, mm. Derrick Henry, nin- what? You going to win the Super Bowl with Derrick Henry, Ninja, please? Mm. You work for UPS. Just to let you know, Ninja, this Ninja is not the same guy. <laughs> ninja like, we going to have Phillip Rivers. Ninja, we going to be set. Ninja, we going to have it, uh, Winslow, all that shit. Ninja, we're like, oh, Ninja. <laughs> anyway, like, yeah, Adrian Peterson at back. Ninja, we going to have Ray Lewis at the crack back. We going to have, uh, we going to have that ninja, uh, any other ninjas, them slant receivers for the New England Patriots. And I'm like, man, bro, you come on, man. Stop putting this team together. So when I hear people talk about what they're going to do, I'm going to be a real estate agent. Mm. A real estate agent. A real estate agent? I'm going to get into real estate. <laughs> I'm like. <sighs> and I be hearing hoes talk about that too. Of course, it's a bottle service girl, a girl that work on the street corner, a girl that's on OnlyFans. Ninja, oh, my backup plan, I'm going to be a real estate agent. And trust me, I worked in real estate. I see a lot of them women come through. And they come through and they look, they think they look pretty. They think the real estate job is easy and they're going to get out there and they're going to start selling million dollar houses and shit. Ninja, the best real estate agents are ugly women and ugly ass men. You know what the best real estate agents are? Accountant type real estate agents. Ninjas that carry like briefcases and they carry files under their arm and they sweating under their armpit. A ugly, like an ugly Chinese woman killing real estate. She got the bold haircut. She killing it. She got a blouse on, basic-ass pants, and penny loafers. She killing the real estate game. But these pretty people think they're going to just jump out here with a pretty bill and then make some videos and sell a lot of real estate. Nah, it's the accountant-type real estate. And and then just that have team of agents, right? You never see that guy. It's just a nerdy dude, white dude like this, and he got a big team of real estate agents. Killing it. Not pretty people. Not pretty women. Pretty women don't be killing it. You know what they be doing? Selling pussy. That's what they be doing. Mm. Going broke. (laughs) All right, anyway. All right, but I hear stuff like that, and I be like, man, you ain't going to make it. So, you know, man, try try another business. Try another business. You're going to be screwing guys that are going to tell you they're going to let you list their $6 million house, and then he's going to beat the Punani up, and then he's going to go back and hire a real real estate agent. That's what's going to happen. Trust me, I know. And you're going to have to plunk like ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 of initial investment, initial investment to become a real estate agent. You got to have 
$20,000 to plunk into your marketing. <laughs> so anyway, them, them people that be them real estate girls on the internet, on TikTok and shit, they don't be selling nothing, just to let you know. Uh, shout out to the contractor says toxic women most of the times have the best peace leave. Yeah, the best peace leave is attached to the craziest, the craziest women. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, man. Shout out to uh, Sincere says peace and good health to you, CGA. Just paying my free agent tax. Salute to you. Salute to you too, Sincere. And trust me, man, I've seen enough real estate, real estate agent, real estate agent life is boring as hell. It ain't exciting at all. Trust me, I've been a real estate agent and I worked in market. It's not, it's not exciting at all. And it seems like it's easy work. They, they ain't doing no work and they just looking at houses all day. <laughs> right. Dr. Thunder says the loudest one is the weakest one. Frank Lucas, the loudest one is the weakest one. Especially content creators that be challenging other content creators, all right, and, and targeting them, and yeah, they be they they be out here to be be the weakest one. It's crazy, man. But look, trust me, if you if you want to know where direction is going, I I kind of have the pulse on the street. I've tried lots of jobs, I've had success in some jobs, some job, but I know inside information about certain jobs, and I know what jobs ain't gonna be shit coming up in ten years. I was like, that ain't gonna be nothing. I ain't going to be nothing. He says, even the cute Latina real estate agents, the cutest women were the wackest real estate agents. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. They was the wackest ones and a lot of their breasts stank too. A lot of them was leasing Mercedes C classes and they sold very little real estate. The real estate agents that killed it, like I was saying, were people that spoke different languages, mostly Asian. And this is Southern California, too. And by the way, if you're not selling real estate in Southern California or New York or Miami, I mean, <laughs> in my opinion, just so you know, like, like them commission checks is little. All right. So you got to be selling in a big market. Remember, what's the number one rule of real estate? First of all, let me say this, because I know you're going to be like, I know a real estate agent in Milwaukee. All right, now just shut the fuck up. The highest house she's going to sell is worth $200,000. She's going to clear $2,000 in commission. What's the number one rule of real estate? When you understand this, then it's going to make sense. I'm giving you game right now. I'm giving y'all game, Ninja Blue Chip. You got to be in the prime market, first of all. What's the number one rule of real estate? Let's see if you know this. When you know this, then you can't argue my point. Okay, the number one rule of real estate. I got it on the Notorious channel. What is it over here on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel? The number one rule of real estate is location, location, location. That's the number one rule of real estate. So if you buy a house in the desert, location is a factor. Okay, you're going to have least, less amount of people wanting to rebuy that house. You buy prime real estate near the ocean, you got high value real estate, high cost real estate. You'll have a lot of people that may want to buy that or at least may want to look at it and invest in it. So location, location, location. That's the number one rule of real estate. Number two, number two. When it comes to these women, they're not getting those listings. The pretty women are not getting those listings. If they are on the listing, they are a on a team where the main agent is either a male or a something like that, like, like a female, but she's married. So the, the most successful real estate agents aren't the pretty girls. They, they make a lot of pretty pictures and videos and shit like that for the internet. But, but, and they lease, they lease their cars. They, they get some sales, but they're looking for the next sale. Like they're, they're, they need another commission check really quickly because their bills are piling up. The most successful real estate agents I've seen are Asian men and women. But I'm, again, I'm dealing with California and, um, and, uh, people who have teams. So a man, mostly men that have a team of agents that they're killing it. Then the next one are going to be married women, women who are married, who their supplemental income comes from real estate where her husband is an industry Titan somewhere. And she leverages the neighborhood because she's kind of like a stay at home mom, their kids aged up, but she leverages her husband's network and she's known in her community. So her farm 
is everybody in her community. So she lives there. She knows everybody in the neighborhood. And she'd be like, she can always talk to them about real estate. So that when you come in and you try to farm that neighborhood, that woman's already farmed that neighborhood. And she's just a supplemental income. So the husband, the husband makes a lot of money and he makes $150,000 a year. And he's been making that for 20 years straight. And then she comes in, she's married. This is her secondary job. She started it while she was a mother and she didn't came up. Those are the, those are the successful real estate agents. She's 50, 60 years old and killing it. She, it, so it's the network that kills it. Those are the most successful real estate agents. When I see these pretty girls with their makeup and their videos and they ain't doing shit out here. <laughs> they do it. Trust me. Don't think she making a bag. I'm just telling you as a man, just trust me on this one. They ain't making no bags. Some of them are. There's exceptions to the rule. Remember, there's going to be outliers. There's going to be outliers. But them bitches is doing $250 houses in Midland, Texas. The commission check is two grand. I mean, if you, by the time they get all their fees, she's going to clear two grand. Now, meanwhile, that, 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 that wife that does real estate for the last 10 years and net levers her network, she getting thirteen to $30,000 commission checks in Southern California. Yep, Jewish community, uh, people that know certain communities. Jewish people have their own Jewish people. Um, Asian people deal with Asians. Middle Eastern people deal with Middle Easterns. Uh, white people deal with white people. This is typical. But, then when, but the problem with black people is that they don't buy real estate. So if you're a b- black realtor, you almost have to deal with exclusively black clientele, which if your black population in your area is small, or not buying houses, you got to deal with crossover and you got to go pick off Asian customers and clients. You got to pick off Latino customers and clients. But if you don't know how to speak Spanish, that's going to be a, that's going to be a problem for you. It's going to be a problem. But if you are black and can speak Spanish or Japanese or Vietnamese or Middle Eastern, like, but, but typically people deal with their, their culture. Cross the board. Cross the board. Mm. In that business, typically, you got to, people deal with their people. And I, people sought me out because I was a black real estate agent. They were like, hey, I'm black. Hey, you a brother. I want to give the business to you. It's kind of how it goes. Now, again, there's outliers. There's marketing. There's things you can do to get around that. But that's kind of how it works. That's because you're dealing with a major transaction. It's the second most, um, it's the second most, well, it's the biggest transaction a person's going to do. So they're not just going to go pick some whore because she looks good. Some 304, some former bottle service chick. They're not going to pick that. This is the most important, largest purchase they're going to ever make. They're not going to pick a, a 304. <laughs> okay. They're going to pick somebody that know how to negotiate, knows the contract, um, knows how to explain the, the purchasing agreement. Knows how to negotiate and leverage the price down. Knows how to represent them. Knows how to get the best value for their listing. Knows how to market their listing. They're not going to pick a 304. <laughs> They're not just going to pick some 304 that was a bottle service girl stripper a year ago. Very rarely are people going to do that. They want to pick somebody that's tr- that knows math, that knows figures, that knows comparable uh, properties that sold in the neighborhood. You think they're going to pick a bimbo? Some former prostitute, you think they're going to pick a bimbo? So (laughs) they're not going to pick a bimbo to do that. No. Now, she might be a co-agent on the listing. She might be an agent that represents a team, and she's on the flyer. But, no, they ain't picking no bimbo. (laughs) So, anyway. uh, Anyway, I'm just giving y'all game here. So you better know how to get in there and know how to work the system and market and, and know what you're doing. We got it, brothers. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Just give me y'all game. And by the way, real estate agencies right now, most, most people can do all the, the transaction by themselves or they can get it done on computer. So it's difficult. They don't need you to go show them houses and shit like that. Um, most people know what house they want. They can get it down to the two houses. Show me these two houses. Okay. Shout out to Kayla says saying Drake is the GOAT is like saying LeBron is the GOAT. They both are not the GOAT in their uh, their 
respective professions. I know young people just don't know, I guess. <laughs> All right. I need money. Shout out to you says every woman I know is a real estate agent and an investor. Yeah, because, you know, real estate agent, you don't have to clock in and clock out. Trust me, when we go to the mili- in real estate every week, there's a team meeting every week. There's a, a marketing programs and, and guest speakers. Guess who I don't see there? The pretty women. They be getting manicures and pedicures and turning tricks. Meanwhile, the people that are there to learn be there at the weekly meeting. <laughs> All right, anyway. But yeah, let's get back to the show. I just wanted to give y'all a couple of blue chips. Don't be mad at me. And again, exception proves the rule. If you find someone and say, coach, what about her? Ninja, that's an exception. It's an outlier. It proves my point. Show me 50 attractive women killing the real estate game. In one area, it ain't going to happen. All right, what are we doing here? What is the next subject matter? Marrying for money, and then we're going to get to prawn stars here. Marrying for money. Let's start off with this clip right here. I guess these are all kind of in the same category. There's different conversations here. So what do we got here? Incoming stitch. Women in their 30s. Remember, 30s, the new 20. She says, I really want to know, what, what do you think a 31-year-old looks like? Well, to me, 31-year-old women can look young. You know, what do you think a 31-year-old looks like? Because 30 is not old. I'm 38. No Botox, no filler. I have makeup on, but no filter. I'm just a baby girl. I really want to know what do you think a 31-year-old looks like? Because 30 is not old. I'm 30. All right. She says she's 39. 38. 38. Okay. Shout out to Ling Ling here. Okay. She's 38 years old. That's a lot of neck. That's a lot of neck on that Ling Ling. I certainly would love to get on that neck. All right. <laughs> she's 39. She says she has no makeup. I see some makeup. I mean, there's a lot of red lipstick right there. Does that not count for makeup? Okay. She says, I'm a baby girl, 38. <laughs> okay. No filter. Are you sure? Are you sure? No Botox, no filler. I have makeup on, but no filter. Oh, okay. She does have makeup. Okay. I was about to say. All right. She does have makeup. But she says, no filler, no filters. And Asian don't raisin, okay? Asian don't raisin. So, yeah, I mean, you you definitely have a little bit of an advantage, and they typically don't try to be out there in the sun. They avoid the sun like a damn vampire, right? They be like, get me out of this sun, all right? And so they know that the sun does age them uh, pretty significant. But to say you're a baby girl? I'm just a baby girl. Oh, damn. Okay, all right, uh, say that. Get him, daddy. Whisper that in my ear, please. Okay, daddy. Damn. That might give me a quick nut if you do that too often. Get him, daddy. All right, anyway. She knows how to do it. I think she's had a couple sugar daddies in her life. She said, I'm just a baby girl. Now, baby, now we're 38 in baby girls now. Now we're 38 in baby girls. Yeah, man. This age thing, man, we, we, definitely, are, we definitely are extending our adolescence a little too far now. I'm getting uncomfortable. All right, what do we got here? We got uh, coming up next, Passport Bros. All right, we got the Passport Bros here. We have uh, this German Nana that's going to say the Passport Bros are winning. Okay, the Passport Bros are winning. All right, let me see here. Passport Bros. They're allegedly getting passports and traveling to different countries to find mates, women to marry, who have values that they admire. Well, I'm a mother of four sons, and one of my sons married a woman from Spain. And I'm here to tell you, she is the most precious person in the world. She's very well educated. She's very elegant. She's very feminine. She knows how to cooperate with my son and not be demanding and entitled and ungrateful for the things that he does for her. Well, women in America have grown so entitled and so demanding that they think they can do anything they want to do and get away with it treat a man any way they want to treat him and even denigrate him when they weigh 300 pounds and he wants someone who looks feminine wow. who behaves feminine oh, who you, takes care of herself i'm going to encourage my other sons who are not married to get a passport wow passport bros they're allegedly damn oh passport bros the passport bros came in 
All right, German Nana came in with the spit. Damn, chill out, Granny. All right, Granny, you out here. She hurting these Western women. All right, she know what up. She's like, these Western women, they're so entitled, man. And she said they overweight. She said, wait, she said they 300 pounds. Nana out here with the hatchet job on these American modern women. Demanding they think they can get away with anything. Shout out to Nana, man. Hey, man, you don't ever see that many women out here admitting these truths. She said, I got sons, and I refuse to let them marry one of these demanding, fat, out of shape, uh, entitled American women. All right, that's what she said. I didn't say it. I didn't say it. She said it. She said it. She said the passport bros are winning. Shout out to the passport bros and all my passport bros. Shout out to Skyler, 1MT. Shout out to BMT. And those are the passport bros I know off the top of my head. BMT, Black Man's Travel. Go go subscribe to BMT. Go subscribe to um Skyler over there, 1MT. Who else? There's another dude over there. Austin, I guess he's the he's the he's the most visible one. Shout out to her, man. I'm gonna tell you, man. I'm gonna tell you, man. These American women getting entitled. She from Alabama. She from Alabama. She said, you better go get you overseas, get your passport. She is a misogynist. She is a misogynist. But as you can see, what is she protecting? Her sons. When it came down to it, a mother couldn't lie and set her son up for failure. She was like, "Mm -mm. I don't mind that you go down to Barcelona. Well, Spain. I don't know about that. But she was like, Get you a non-American girl. Go. <laughs> All right. Oh, Zoom to Thailand. Shout out to Zoom to Thailand, too. Shout out to Zoom to Thailand. Um, and these are the passport bros that represent that movement that have put it out there and everybody's criticizing them. And there's no perfect, there's no perfect movement. There's no perfect decision, but at least there's options for people. And um Zoom to Thailand. Yeah, shout out to Richie Mac. Richie Mac in the building. Go su- go subscribe to those brothers over there. All right. I have no problem with any of these guys. And um, yeah, man, because because I think if 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 you believe for men in my book, Free Agent Lifestyle, I basically said the same thing. Get your passport in the book 2018 when I wrote it. OK, before that movement became uh, mainstream, it already existed. But I even said in the book, man, go travel, go travel to see this world. Open up your mind. Because we're dealing with women that we believe that are our, our only options. Open up your mind and then open up your mind culturally. You'll start to be able to appreciate people and uh get rid of some of your anger and open up the world and get some culture 100 percent. so shout out to nana man shout out to nana uh realizing that these american men guys american women are not it it's not they're not it now doesn't mean all of them are bad but they're mostly spoiled like they're coming in offering you nothing they're just there to take 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 they're just there to take. They're literally just walking in and be like, okay, here. I'm here. Give me. Give me, give me, give me. You're supposed to do this. Give me that. Give me your time. Give me some money. Pay these bills. Bills. Bills, as we talked about yesterday. Give me that. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to that. You're supposed to hold me, hug me, not feel like I make, make me insecure. They're really the men- ungrateful ingrates and mentally unstable. And it's because we only, we only know them and we don't know what other people are doing. We limit our options. We limit our options. I'd say really explore your options. It's sad out here. Uh, and the American women, they they don't even know. They don't even care either. They don't even care. And then when they see you go off there, you tricking, you doing this, they're going to call you all kind of names. Like They really want you to just clean up their bullshit and just accept them and all their mistakes and their, all of their bullshit. And they just come here with their hand out. You're supposed to do this. They just think you're a piece of shit. Honestly, what has many women, what are the many, if you're dating now, what do they offer you? I'm going to almost tell you, they don't offer anything. They're just giving you duties and responsibilities, using you as utilities, using you economically or time-wise. You're time tricking. All men are tricking dealing with American women. They're going to either use your time or money. They're going to get one of them. And then they come out with a paw out and all kind of instructions. And then when you ask them to do one thing, they look at you like you crazy. What? 
So please open up your open up your options. They're not giving you much. Even when they say we're not giving them much, they ain't giving you much. Trust me. I know the difference, man. It's crazy. They ain't offer, they're not offering you much. I'll be there for you. That's that's a benefit to you. Okay, name one thing that benefits me exclusively. You being there for with me and investing in me or waiting till I build up and then jumping on board. Oh, you make 200,000, I'll jump on. <laughs> like that's not an offer to me. That benefits me none. All right. What do we got here? This woman is a young lingling for Takeout Thursday. She says, "Ladies, stop dating men that are older. Stop dating older men." All right, so this woman looks like she's 26. And she's going to reflect on her time spent dating older men. But you know I'm going to turn this on her. Let's go. 26 now, and I reflect all the time. And I think one of the greatest mistakes that I made in my early 20s was dating older men. Like dating a guy five years older than me, dating a guy 10 years older than me, dating a guy 12 years older than me. That's a story time for another time. But if your eldest daughter, especially immigrant parents daughter, and you're also like a natural people pleaser, that's like one of the worst things you can do for yourself. Oh, and also if one of your highest requirements for finding a partner is that you respect them, like that that's got to be the worst combination because you meet this man that's older than you and automatically you assume because he has these things that he should have at his grown age you're like oh my god like he he has a car he has a 401k and you respect this man right and then you want to make yourself seem worthy of his respect too so you start bending over backwards and doing all these things for them in reality they're just a regular guy at his appropriate age having the things that he should already have at that age i know i know you want that oppa lifestyle but i'm telling you if you're in your early 20s just just date someone your age better yet date someone younger that's 18 plus because oh girl oh girl i'm 26 now oh man boy i, I see what you did there boy oh, okay all right she got her eyes rolling in the back of her head and I there. um ma'am she thought she ate didn't she as they say, she, she thought she ate. So I get what she's saying here. She's like, listen, these young women that want shit that we just described, they want shit, they want a certain lifestyle, and they'll go after the money, and they'll go after stability, and they're impressed. We always say, uh, Chris Rock even came up with the idea, women don't, women, once they're exposed to something, they don't, that's their expectation. So if you got an apartment, they're like, and they're young, they're like, oh, he has his own apartment. He has his own car. He has his own house. He's He's focused financially, but they don't realize that man has options, right? And so when they get up there, she thinks that that guy that has all of these things she's attracted to is going to see her and be like, oh, I'm going to dote on you, and I'm going to spend time, and I'm going to write poems, and I'm going to make you my priority. And then she gets kicked back down. That, what, what happened was she found those guys, and she wasn't the priority. He, they didn't spoil her. She was just one of many, and she was like, oh, that ain't it. I thought they were going to do all these other things, too, that I want other men to do and have all the things that I like. She was just a number. Then she says, date someone your own age. Why? Power dynamic. Power dynamic is equalized. As she's rising up in age, she used her younger years to try to get what she thought was going to be what she wanted. This is the same thing when women say, oh, I've dated rich men. That ain't it. I've dated athletes. That ain't it. I dated niggas and niggas from the club. That ain't it. I dated older men. I dated short men. I dated tall men. Now I'm going to lower my standards or I'm going to come back to an equal power dynamic where I failed. I thought that's what it would, what I wanted, but I didn't. Now here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing that people are missing. She said five, 10, 15 years. She's now 26 if you roll the clock back, let's say to 23, and she dated someone 15 years older, where does that put her? All right, where does that put her, Ninja? Get him, Daddy. That's where it put her, right here. Okay, Daddy. All right, we talking about men, late 30s, 40s. She probably dated 50-year-old white men. We, we know what time it is. We know what time it is. But now she's 26, 27, 28, and she's like, And that's you. Here we go. Now she that that's you. And then she said, even go for younger. And that's yep. you. So they come in, want to control you and use their emotions like you a little boy. I'm not a little boy. I'm a grown ass man, maybe. All right. And I'm a grown ass man with options and leverage. Like 
you can't play no games with us. So now let me go play some games with these goofy ass niggas. And that's you. So I always tell you, pay attention to women who say things like this because there's a lot that she's saying that you're not getting. This woman has dated older men almost her entire life. Now it's coming back saying, oh, those guys ain't it. They manipulative. They controlling. Power dynamic is off. It shouldn't happen. Older men are creepy. They get over on you. Men shouldn't date younger women. But they dated older men when they were younger. Mm. So they did it. They did exactly what they're saying not to do, which is okay. But why are you now punishing the older men that get the leverage and come back down to the younger women and then you tell them not to do it? Well, I get it, but that ain't fair, Ninja. Let me get the options. Let me go get these young pieces of calico. Let me get my stuff right here. Oh, man, yeah. She been, so this is the sad part about it. This is the sad part about it. Okay. Now, so maybe the younger women that date older men will have some common sense and not think that, oh, I'm special or I'm going to do him a favor or he can't get nobody like me, but he can. And he can get many like you. And he's not there for reindeer games. And he can't be controlled by your little poon poon. You got your little poon out. You got your little poon out. And you thought your little poon was going to go in there and finesse this older guy. That, you know, and this older guy's probably going to treat me like a princess. huh? Mm. But let me go leverage these simps. Let me go back to, back to these simps. Let me go back to these younger men to get that control. That's what she's talking about. All right. So always remember, anytime you hear a woman of any age Talk about not dating older men when you're younger. You have to understand this one thing. They've dated older men almost always, mm. almost always. What they're talking about is experience. They're not talking about, mm, that seems weird. Now, the only women that might say that like it's weird or it's disgusting is probably someone that hasn't dated older men that look at it as disgusting. They're like, I can never see myself doing that. That's the only ones that will are that you can listen to. They're not talking about experience. But when they talk about power dynamics and control and as this and that, and you won't get to do, they're talking about experience. That's it. Yep, the regret. They talking about regret. They talking about that shit didn't work out for me. But I guarantee you, let's talk to the older men. Let's talk to the older men you dated, 5, 10, 15, 20 years older. Let's talk to them. I guarantee you they don't regret it. Mm. I guarantee you they are not. They're talking about it as a positive experience. They had fun the entire time. <laughs> mm. <laughs> they got a good they got a good rise out of it. They had fun. Ninja, and it was a good cost benefit analysis. It was a savings in money. They saved a lot of money. Right. They had fun. They 40, 41, 45, 47. They had a good time. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. These people wilding, man. Shout out to you. Okay, we got another former, another one. An old washed up sugar baby. Here we go. <laughs> Damn, ma'am. You looking. All right. We, we, we got an old washed up sugar baby right here. So we got a woman out here been running around with older men right here. She going to school these young women on what not to do when you think you're going to marry an older man and finesse him out of his money. All right, so we'll go ahead and listen to her. Married for maybe. All right, let me see here. Let me start it from the beginning. All right, let's get her back to the beginning here. She looking a little frumpy dumpy. Uh, she definitely in her 40s. All right, maybe she's a lawyer. I'm not sure. All right. But uh, she looked like she'd been rolled hard and hung up wet. Mm. She looked like she'd been ran through it. <laughs> All right. She done been through some. She done been through some situations, as they say. <laughs> she definitely ain't looking a little fresh and firm and tightly packed. She definitely been put through some situations. She definitely had to go see her sugar daddy. She looked like she was someone's spe special friend. I just want to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner. Uh -huh. I want to sing a song just for you. Because... Mm. You're my special friend. Special friend. Special friend. You're my special friend. Yeah, she's been a lot of special friends out here. All right, let's see what she has to say. She's going to give us and the ladies some good advice right here. Let's let her rip. 
I have a message for all those sugar babies out there. Are you considering marrying your sugar daddy? Do you think that you only have to be married for maybe a month or two and then you can divorce him and get half his stuff? Well, think again. So you've been dating your sugar daddy for some years now. Um, he's asked you to marry him and you're thinking, okay, cha-ching, payday. I'm about to get paid. I just have to be married to him for a little while and boom, I'm going to get half of his stuff. Not so much. In the state of Indiana, there is what's called a short-term marriage. That's a marriage that is only lasted five years or less. In the state of Indiana, you have to be married to someone for at least five years for it to be an equitable distribution or an equal division of the assets. So it may not be cha-ching that payday that you're looking for. You may have to stay longer than five years if you want half. And we're Oh man, boy, I tell you, man, what do I tell you, man? The marriage is, pl the divorce is planned before the wedding. Thotting and plotting. So now she got these younger girls. I'm going to marry them. She, she basically talking to Samantha Lee and Tyrese. She talking to, uh, you know, these hoes that go in and get out and be like, I'm entitled to. She talking to Jenny Mai and them. I'm going to marry a rich guy and then get in, get out and bait and switch them. Praying mantis them. And so then she's like, uh-uh, baby, you ain't going to get the bag like you think. You can't just marry a guy and then get half. All right, so you got to get a long-term marriage, which in California, a long-term marriage is a marriage over 10 years. This is why when people say, I've been married for a long time, coach, and I'll be how long? Four years. I'm like, that's not a long time. A marriage literally for a long-term marriage in California is 10 years. In Indiana, apparently, is five years. And really, it's really 20 years in my mind. If you ain't been married more than 20 years, it ain't been a long time. Now, it has been dog years. Trust me. It's going to feel like it's been a lifetime. And if you ever get divorced, you're going to feel like you got had a whole new life, a whole new lease in life. You're like, damn, I'm free. But really, we only listening to people 20 years and up. If you're going to come and brag on your marriage, please have 20 years. And I'm going to tell you, after 20 years, you ain't going to be bragging. All right? Mm. The likelihood that you'll be bragging about your marriage is slim to none. And you're going to have to have been seeing the devil in that marriage by 20 years. Ninja, you got two years in, three years in, five years in. I don't want to hear shit about your marriage. Matt Walsh running around here talking about 12 years. I got 12 years in. And, Ninja, double it. Do another 12. You're going to come out here beaten. You're going to be looking weather beaten like this woman. <laughs> Rode through. Do another 12 years and talk to me then. <laughs> talk me to me then. Ninja, you probably ain't going to make it another 12 years. I'm going to say highly unlikely that you will statistically. So, it is what it is. All right, so good that she's giving girls information so that they're not preying on men and targeting them. But the sad part is now we know what women are getting married for. Not all women, but we know what men are what women are thinking about. Oh, I, I needed that information. So they're literally talking about divorce prior to the marriage. But then when you bring up prenup, they're like, oh, why are you bringing up prenup? It's unromantic. Bitch, I ain't marrying you for romance. All <laughs> right. You thought I was marrying you for romance? Nah, Ninja. All right. Last lady here on marrying or d dealing with older older men. This woman says. At that age where I can take you or I can take your daddy. And your daddy's more experienced than you. So don't mess around with me, okay? Because I will take your place in the will. Oh. I'm at that age where I can take you or I can take your daddy. And your daddy's more experienced than you. So don't mess around with me, okay? Because I will take your place in the will. Oh, man. I'm at that age where I can take you. Or I can date your daddy. Yeah, well, that's true. I'm going to just let you know, Ninja. She's not lying. <laughs> All right? Mm. She's definitely not lying. All right? And it's good because when you're at the age where you are daddy, it does get great. Get him, daddy. You can go right back down to the junior college. Fixes a bind. Fixes a bind. Get that young piece of calico and you good. Now, here's the funny thing about it. Here's the funny thing about it. They're only after your money, coach. You're tricking. That's how the women go. The women go. They're only after your money. Men be like, you trick and you ruin the dating marketplace. Now, y'all wasn't concerned about the dating marketplace, ninjas, when y'all was out here running game and pumping dumping. You wasn't concerned then. All right. And the women. What do you mean she's only after me for my money? Like, ladies, aren't you dating men that are financially, economically attractive? Aren't you dating men that are financially stable? Isn't that a goal of yours? Isn't that have to do with money? 
It does have to do with money. It does. And aren't you in debt? Probably highly likely. And I'll have to add this, ladies. If, in fact, every woman's dating for money, a younger woman is really cheap. <laughs> a younger woman is really cheap. Oh, my goodness. I tell you. $100 goes a long way for a young, nice piece of calico. But if I give one of you granny panty wearing ass, arthritis, varicose vein, bum knee, knock knee, cock eye, single mammies, $100, ninja, you, it would be like it would be like $10. Older women problems are very expensive. Older women problems are very expensive. Like they need a new engine that they burned out. They need a new roof, a water heater that exploded in their in their garage or kitchen. Older women need a new washer and a dryer that went out. Older women need and need to go to uh, Turks and Caicos for vacation. When I could take this younger woman to Cabo on a one and a half hour flight, be in and out of there for the weekend. Older women need uh, they 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 kids uh, private school tuition paid. Older women need a new front door. Older women need to pay off $68,000 in student loan debt after they ain't made a payment or forbeared it or deferred it for another 10 years. Old women are behind four or five months on a car that they got to park four blocks away around the corner so the repo man can't find it. Older women need a new hip replacement. Older women going to have osteoporosis and they going to need medical bills from back when they was in college paid for. <laughs> All right. Older women got big financial needs. Ninja, they need a new transmission. Ninja, older women need <laughs> older women need to be bailed out of their apartment lease. Ninja, they, I mean, bruh, older women, the the ceiling in their apartment caving in from a big rain, and they gotta put pots and pans all across the damn floor so they can get them drips, drip, drip, drip. <laughs> All right, older women had a car crash and got concussions, and you can't blow their back out. Oh, my concussion acting up. All right, sciatica on my back. All right, and then my hamstrings tight, and I got a back injury. My scoliosis and my damn, my damn, my coccyx bone was uh, injured in a ski accident ass. Mm. Talking about younger women. Younger women, I can take $200 and entertain her for the whole night and have some money left over so she could go to Sephora and get a couple makeup palettes. <laughs> mm. Older woman want to go to Sephora like, hey, daddy, can I get some Sephora money? Hey, man, go wild, baby. Go wild. Go wild in Sephora, baby. I don't want you to get caught stealing. Go get you some lip glop. Go get you a couple of makeup palettes. Go get you a blush brush. Mm. Older women got their hairline pushed back here. They need a whole install for their wig. All right. Younger women still got baby hair. They can lay down with some Vaseline. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh-oh. Lori in here, irate. That's the same with older men. You too, coach. Older men too. You too. It's men too. What about the men? All right, here we go right here. <laughs> Ninja, I'll be like, come here, little girl. Come here. Give me, give me, give me. Give me. Daddy. Let me get you good. The younger, ninja, younger ninjas be like, coach, man, that's tricking. All right, here you go, baby. Uh huh. She'd be like, yeah. Okay, daddy. <laughs> All right, yeah. All right, let me stop. Oh, man. All right. She mad. And your men too. And you old too. You ain't paying for no dudes. <laughs> You ain't paying for no dues. All right, let me stop, man. These people are going to get mad. They're going to call me names. I'm not out here to piss you off. I'm just here to tell the truth. I'm just here to tell the truth, man. What you want me to do? Younger girl be like, my biology book went up to $100. Oh, really? You need a new biology book? She's like, I can't study without my unit one, unit two biology book. I got you, baby. I got you. Come on through. Come on through. I'll get you your biology book. I got money. i get you your biology book. I got your biology book for the semester. I got you. Mm -hmm. Come on through and pick up your biology book. Where, where, where you want me to get it? <laughs> all right. Older women be like, damn, all my tires are bald. I need four tires. Mm. 
They be coming in needing four tires and a muffler and some timing belts and a transmission. They go in, they car ain't been in the shop and an oil change. They car ain't been in the shop in six years. They get their mirror. They go in out. They take their car to the shop. They be like $2,000 fixed. They be like, damn. <laughs> I need four tires, a new transmission, eight timing belts, a new radiator. Uh, I need, I need uh, disc brakes. I need rotors. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I'm like, baby, yo, yo, man, come on, man. Come on, bro. You asking for way too much. <laughs> man. I'm thinking of going to uh, finance in a new car. You know, these bras will take that car, $2,000 worth of repairs. They'll abandon it, blew out their motor, ain't oil changed it, and they'll go and finance a new car, 7%, $500 down, and come off the lot with a new car that in plummeted in value. They underwater in the loan. <laughs> and say I'm doing it big I got me a new car you already behind on the payment let me stop all right anyway ladies you know what I'm talking about where Lori at it's you too it's men too men do it too Lori experience it's experience I've experienced it there's some no good men out here I've done it and done it for 20 years I need me a real man she here all right, we got we do have super chats. We're gonna get we're gonna get back to the show. All right, main event coming up too. <laughs> Eight hundred dollars a month, ninety six payments. Like you really went to your car lot. You got that car. Mm. The contractor, uh, we got him. Shout out to Trevor Nader says was talking to a blue pill man at the gym the other day, and he was amazed about the knowledge I had of women and their games. And I told him I listened to CGA. He says right here, I'm listening to CGA, and he will get you right. Shout out to you. Thanks for, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Most blue pill men will fight you. They'll beat you up. We got I Need Money says, you think Asian or BWH better? <laughs> Why are you trying to get me in trouble? I'm trying to be nice to the sisters today. Sisters, he asked me, do I think Asian or black women age better? <laughs> All right, I'll let y'all answer that because I've already been kind of roasting them for the last 10 minutes. So I'll, um, I'll come back to that. Give me, give me some time. Give me some time, man. I got to give them a break. You know what I mean? Lori going crazy over there. Lori is like, put them up. Put them up. She's ready to fight me. She's like, this is reprehensible. You are despicable, CGA. You're despicable. Put them up. Mm. Lori ready to fight me, so I ain't, I ain't trying to. <laughs> All right. I ain't trying to. I ain't trying to go in. Let me let me let them catch their breath right now. Right now, they angry and stewing and steam coming out of their ears. Oh, man. Let me see if I got these brothers here. Did I get, I think I got all of these. Okay, I got all of them. I caught up. Thank you, brothers. Where Lori at? She, okay. Oh, she says I'm not black. Okay, all right. She's not black. Okay, where, Lori, what are you? Lori, what are you? Lori, see, I just want to know because she's here. She don't got no, she don't got no picture. Uh, Lori, I, I think I know what you are. Lori is a. Do you hey, what you like, bro? Folks? What's your type? You like black, white? I like white girls more better. Okay. Yo. Especially in the thick time. That's what I'm talking Word. about. Snow bunny. Yeah. Uh -huh. In other words, pod. Pod. That's what I like. Yeah, yeah. Hey, say that video again. Say it one more time, but say it slow. Pog. P A W G. That is white girl. She is one. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. What you like, bro? Yeah. I like fat ass white girls, the thick time. Ooh, the yeah. types. Yeah. <laughs> Those are my favorite. Okay. Yo, what are you talking about? Okay. <laughs> She's fall, fat ass white girl. Fat ass white girl. <laughs> Shit, I got but I know. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think she is. I, I think I got it right. She's I got it right. She says she is. She says she's white. All right, she the thick are you the thick time? Are you the thick time? She must be the thick time. Lori, are you the thick time? 
She says, I'm not a ball. <laughs> mm. All right, Lori, your flat back. All right, we got Lori flat back in here. All right, hey, meet me after class, Lori. I got you. I got you. All right, anyway. <laughs> she said she's not the dick time. So she a flat back. All right, we got Lori in here. Shout out to her. All right, uh, thank you for being a good sport, too. She a Kaylee. All right, so here's Lori right here. We do have Lori right here. Is Lori, is this you? Hi, my name is Kaylee. I'm a blonde. I have no tips. I make boys fall in love with me. They always throw in fits. I like being single. No, I've never been cuffed. These boys want our relationship, but I'm just trying to fuck. Oh, yeah. Lori's uh, Kaylee. Lori's Kaylee in here. All right, let me see here. Yep, she's Kaylee. She, she says she's Kaylee. All right, or Crystal Methany. She's Crystal Meth. All right, either way, either way, Lori, I appreciate you for being here. All right, main event, uh, main event time right here. All right, main event time. What do we got here? We got prawn stars here. Prawn stars are dropping like flies. Let's go ahead and take you through it right quick. I got to get my banner up. Where's my banner? All right, prawn stars are dying. Dying young. Here we go. Well, somewhat young. Prawn star, her name is Cagney Lynn Carter. Dead. All right. Oh, my goodness. After a self-deletion, too. Oh, no. Not a self-deletion. All right, there you go right there. Uh, 36-year-old uh, self-deleted. We're going to come back to her real quick. Uh, that's sad to see um, if you want a picture. And I don't try to name these women, but I, can't, I don't think I can get around it. All right, prawn stars dying young. Why they dying young, man? We got another one right here. Uh, let me come back to her. I'm going to come back to her. Uh, we do have here this year. And by the way, this is all in the last few weeks. Adult film star. Emily Willis's family launches, launches, and I talked about this before, a GoFundMe for hospital bills. Bills following an apparent OD. Um, and they set up a, go, where's the GoFundMe link? Okay, they did set up a GoFundMe. I guess I can't see it. All right, nearly a month after uh, Emily was hospitalized following an apparent OD, the adult film star's family has launched a GoFundMe to help pay for medical bills. That's not good. She's still alive, though. <laughs> Okay, all right. So we got that woman there. We got this woman here. Uh, this was this year as well. Adult film star dies at 24 months after she spoke about abuse in the industry. Wow. The freaks of the industry. 24-year-old, the tragedy comes months after the woman, uh, the public revelation of the very strong sexual harassment she faced in the adult industry. Oh, looks like they got her too, Ninja. Man. She's speaking out. She's from Peru. She's from Peru. The Peruvian adult star, the thick time, was found deceased at her home just weeks, um, just months after she made allegations about abuse in the industry. 24-year-old. We're going to talk about her or that particular idea in a minute. We also have prawn star Jesse James. This was uh, this year as well. Did you guys see that one? Maybe you couldn't see the other one. Uh, prawn star Jesse James, not so young, 43, dead right there after her apparent OD. Okay, cops find her. Cops find her and boyfriend during a welfare check. And there's Jesse James right there, remembering Jesse James. She was from the 2000. Okay, there she, oh, she a nice little piece of tiny thing. She a tiny thing. That she little. She probably like five foot one. Little spinner. Little spinner. They had a welfare check. We'll go over what it is there. She's a little one right there. Uh, the industry is rough. We're going to talk about that here in a minute. Let me go down here. And we now have another young lady. And her name is, is wait a minute. Is this the same woman? What's her name? Sophia Leone. Why don't I have her article up? Her article should be here too. Sophia Leone. Dead this week in an apparent, but they are considering a homicide. Let me go ahead and pull this up here. This is one day ago. Sophia Leone, right here, adult film star found dead in her home. Police called death suspicious. Sophia Leone was found dead in her home by family members on March 1st. Ninja, they out here dropping like flies. Ninja. 
What is going on, Nidra? So we're going to go through each one of those uh, women here and figure out what's going on. Is there something in the, in the water? What's going on here? Well, here it is right here. How the prawn industry affects performers long after their career ends. Being on the other side of the screen in a video still leaves its marks on performers. They are often stigmatized for the rest of their lives. Well, we all knew this. But definitely the stigma, it says, even with all the popularity, there is still massive stigma against these performers. And it says, ever wonder why most of them use stage names? The fact is, being on the other side of the screen in these films leave its marks on performers to the point that they are often stigmatized for the rest of their lives and carry often lifelong negative impacts with them. Guys, the reason why I'm covering this story is we're seeing this even in our world today with the amount of women choosing to do OnlyFans, sugar daddying, sugar babying. They're also dating older men, targeting men for money, right? Dating men that are already established. That's it. That's going to leave a mark because they're going for the money. They're like, I, they're trying to get a bag. They're out here. Um, they're out here, you know, scamming. And uh, they're also being promiscuous, even promiscuous. They're being promiscuous. So the promiscuity, they're writing off. But then when they have mental health issues, they, they turn to drugs. They strip. Strippers are another one. Women are turning to these Gen Z to make money, and they're making the money. But we're seeing that there's long-term effects for some of these women that they can't even live with. They can't even live with it. And then it says right here, is there any way they could have fully understood what they were getting into before they signed up? It says persuaded or coerced, coerced into being in prawn. So now there's the victim mindset of it. Now when they were doing it and getting a bag and living fancy free and traveling and, and just, you know, turning tricks, they were like, hey, I'm doing the smartest thing. In fact, there is an episode of uh, Soft White Underbelly that features this young woman and she's 17 and she's been in these streets for a couple of years. She said, I came from a good household. My parents took care of me. I got everything I wanted, but yet I'm going to go ahead and turn to these streets out here. I'm going to turn to I the streets. I looked at it as I have an ATM between my legs, and I just, I'm just i just using it. Yeah. All I got to do is put my card in, and that's it, and put the PIN number, and boom, money just comes right, right out. Right, and so right now, I mean, I listened to portions of the interview, and she's like, hey, I'm just trying to get a bag. I'm just trying to check, you know, check a trap. I'm going to be out here trapping. So she's saying that at 17. But then she's going to play the victim later on, and then everybody's going to feel sorry for her. But I don't feel sorry for her. It's like these people are making these decisions at these ages, and then they're going to come out and say, I was coerced, I was abused, I was great, I was assaulted. And we don't say that they should be, but these are consequences. This is what happened. I did drugs. The, the industry didn't pay me enough. Mia Khalifa said that. I, I don't own my masters. They still selling my image. I want them to pull it down. Hey, man. You know, these are the traps that come with this chasing the bag. And then what happens is they say, you're broke, you're dusty, you're dirty, you ain't shit, you can't amount, you can't afford me, I'm high price, and then I know my worth. And then they live this life, and then they want you to come in and accept them with all their faults. All right, you need to help me accept me. I was going to a dark time. All right, but they was living it up. And it says the so-called glamorous life. It says right here, it's a, a lot of the, the industry has a lot of shady practices. At times, performers are roped in with promises of a glamorous lifestyle, fun opportunities, and promises of easy transactions into the or transitions into the mainstream media. That's never rarely going to happen, but it's never as easy as it is promoted to be. And there is a lot of undisclosed toxicity right there, toxicity and harm along the way. Let me give a couple more here's right here. This woman says some were tricked in the prom by manipulative producers. Some wanted to start modeling and acting and to pay the bills. They started doing some prom. Some people are, are in it because they're traffic and coerced into it. <clears throat> As a person that grew up in Southern California. I'm going to just say I don't 100% believe in that. Now, it does exist, and there are some women that get into these industries because of ego and vanity. Somebody told them they look pretty. Somebody told them they should be a model. 
And these industries are very predatory. Let me just get this straight. But because of their ego, because of their vanity, because of somebody told them they were pretty, they jump out there. And then what will happen is people will say, hey, nobody will know. You can make a little bit of extra money. And then later on, they have regret. Now, regret doesn't mean you were coerced. Same thing as regret great. Because now you didn't get what you wanted from the situation. Now you want to say you were victimized. I, we need to really have an honest conversation about this because you pursued an industry where you should have known. You know these sharks are out here. To say you were trafficked and coerced is very difficult to explain away. If you were a minor, we get it. But even minors know, right? Even minors know what they're doing. They know, like, for instance, minors know what they're doing to the, to the extent that they never run it through their parents, right? So I'm not saying that they should, but you're finding that these women are doing things at young ages and they're doing it on the low, which means they know it's wrong. And then they get coerced, which is illegal, right? That's where it gets illegal. But you're finding that these women are pursuing these industries. They think it's going to be great. And they'll even participate in it. Cassie will participate in it and come out on the backside. And even the simps will be like, come on, man. She was a victim. Nah, no, no, no. She was a participant. She was a volunteer. She literally was a facilitator of many of these things, meaning she brought people into it. Similar to Ghislaine Maxwell. She was a participant. Well, was Ghislaine a victim or just Lane or whatever you want to call it? Was she a victim? The reality is people can say she was a victim. Why? Because she loved Jeffrey Epstein. She was in love with him. And she would do anything to keep him, including trafficking younger women. Like, you see what I mean? So people can find a way to make her a victim because everything she did was because she wanted to marry Jeffrey. So then she went to this full extent in order to do anything to please her man. That's literally what Cassie did. But Jelaine Maxwell is locked up, right? Cassie got $30 million. And she said, and I loved them, and I thought we were going to get married, and I was a big, it's, a, it's almost similar. She facilitated these, what did they call them? The freak-offs. She facilitated. So these are the tough conversations when, when you have these conversations, and you say, okay, where's your responsibility in this? And you start asking the hard questions, and you repeat the hard questions, and you ask them, and then you're victim-blaming and abuse, and you're just like, mm. <laughs> come on, man. Come on, bro. <laughs> this is the hard conversation to have. All right, let's go through each one of these women and see what their stories are, just briefly. Uh, Cagney is her name. I don't know if that's a stage name. She self-deleted. That's terrible, man. Okay. That's terrible. So what happened to her? They have a memorial here. Cagney's memorial. All right, how much she need? All right, I don't got nothing. I can't put nothing on it. I can't put nothing on it. All right, but she self-deleted. This is her picture here. There she is. Um, I don't know if that's her, you know, you know, Millie Mouth Muskrat, if you will. Average plain Jane stock factory issue, but a lot of y'all ninjas pleasure draw selves to these women, which has its own damages. Be careful with these things here. These people are not happy in these industries. Trust me. Okay, so she self-deleted. It says she started her, she started in the industry way back in the mid 2000s. All right. She died in Cuyahoga County. That's Ohio. All right. Shout out to Columbus, Ohio. I know that's not near it. Uh, but this is her right here. See? See? She looked happy. Everybody thought she was happy. Everybody thought she was living a life. Well, she was in pain. She was in pain. And now they need money for her GoFundMe. How is that possible? Ain't you out here working? She wasn't out here working. She has a daughter. She was a dancer, singer, performer, and a friend. Well, she was a prawn star. That's what she's going to be known at, as. She came out of, well, that, boy, I tell you, man, that's her. Wow, that's her. And that's you. Man, let me tell you, man, I worked in this industry close enough to know that, man, what you see on television, what you see on the screen, what you see in print, what you see on the internet is not the same as what you see in the movies, Ninja. Wow. That's a dramatic difference. Yeah, she got that smoky eye right there. She got that smoky eye right there. She got the look, vis Vixen. Is she the thick time? She's definitely a pog. I know a lot of ninjas uh, fixed they meat to that. 
plain Jane? Well, apparently there's another story to her. We found out during my investigation that this woman has tried to say Chris Brown did her dirty. What? This woman once threw Chris Brown under the bus. Yes. The thick time. And it says potentially triggering content. Former prime star Cagney Carter passed away last week, but it turns out that wasn't the end of her story. She had a lot of people say, uh, she had a lot to say about a run-in with Chris Brown, and that incident is resurfacing after her deletion. Chris Brown caught a stray. And it says the adult film star died by self-deletion last Thursday at just 36, but now her beef with the singer has resurfaced nearly a decade after it first occurred. And it was a messy. And it says right here in tweets she shared on X, formerly Twitter, nine years ago, Cagney claimed that Chris Brown paid her $2,500 to be his escort for an evening. But when she refused to do the sloppy, do the nasty with him, she uh, something he wrongfully thought was part of the deal. She allegedly started bullying him online. Okay, so he this is what she's alleging, that he paid her $2,500 and wanted to get the finish, the, the happy ending, and she denied it. Uh, she put him on blast online at the time, said, I will never F with a woman beater. Ill, disgusting, but you took the money. He is pure evil. If Chris Brown asked you for a private, don't do it. I promise you it is not worth 2500 Not worth, well, she put a lot of money there. He is crazy, according to her. Then she says, People that defend the R&B star that courts women then stalks them are disgusting. I have worked in right here. I have worked in adult for six years. I have clients. Damn. Man, she said I had clients. I got money. All right. Just to say, Chris Brown has something to say, and we're going to allow him to defend himself. We're not just going to report that. Chris Brown denies knowing this broad. Obviously, somebody's looking to get a check or start some shit. I don't know this old looking bitch. This bitch is old, like dusty. Look at her in the Jason Derulo video. Like, she came to Vegas. She probably came to my room. It was too ugly to get in. <laughs> All right. So, Chris Brown says, Bitch, I don't know you. He pulls the Dr. Umar defense. I don't know who she is. And I will be willing to say, he sounds like he's learned his work, but I'd be willing to say that Chris Brown probably doesn't remember her. He's probably been through thousands of women and probably been in party with with more than that tens of thousands of women now that's the probably that's the problem with celebrity that's the problem with celebrity you don't remember stuff and especially if you're dealing with drugs and drinking and alcohol and intoxicants and party lifestyle late night orgies train yanes you're not going to remember it so i will probably venture to say that he doesn't remember it all right so you know he's been famous for a long time i'm gonna just say he defend i did give him a chance to um uh, defend himself against these allegations with this dead prawn star, <laughs> right? So uh, that's what we'll go with. That's what we'll go with. Now, apparently, the other one, young woman here, the fentanyl is going crazy, apparently, in Thousand Oaks. She's been transported to the hospital. This is the Emily Willis girl, 25-year-old. She was not notable, wait, she was notably at a celebrity rehab center in Malibu before the OD incident. And they set up a GoFundMe, too. There's, the family is seeking $60,000 to cover the medical expenses. Now, what are we doing here? This is, this is right here. All funds from GoFundMe will go towards Emily Wilson's recovery. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. There's a gap in coverage in the insurance, leaving us facing significant out-of-pocket expenses for treatment. Nope. Ma'am. Family. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. that's a no-ski now this don't make no sense listen I mean I know the ninjas that don't fix they meat to this woman you might want to donate but why is that mm -mm. she's uh since it's lost the GoFundMe has raised over $20,000 from nearly 270 donors mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> no 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 We're like what the fuck no 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 the way we support is we view Ninja, we plunked down our $5.99. Ninjas that supported her. Where all the money go? Where all the money go? 
I'm going to need detailed records as to what type of treatment she needs. Mm -mm. No, nah, that's not how that works, man. You can't be out here hoeing. Ninja, you can get your money, get your money where you can, Ninja, but don't when, don't when you got an accident. No. Nah. Mm -mm. Because she was out there flaunting her lifestyle, buying Corvettes. All right, she was flying. She was telling y'all ninjas you wasn't shit. And now all of a sudden, where her money at? Mm, no. Ninja, the way pros work is I pay you per view. Your pay-per-view. You can't come in afterwards and say I blew all the money on cocaine, d drugged yourself, and then all of a sudden I got to pay for your errors. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's double dipping. That's double dipping. Ninja, you were paid for services rendered. Ninja, you were paid the service. The service is on par with the pay, as they say in um the great movie Denzel Washington in the movie that I cannot remember, Man on Fire. The services are on par with the pay. And the pay is on par for the service. Ninja, you're not providing services rendered. There's no payment. That's how you work, Ninja. You pay for play. You're mahi mahi. <laughs> Don't come afterwards and ask me to double to dip in, Ninja, and pitch in, pitch in on the forty. Nah, Ninja. Not, you need a, you a service provider. Provide service, Ninja. That's what we pay for. <laughs> He said, that's not my problem. That's whole problems. Yes, Ninja, that's not your problem. That's whole problems. Ninja, I don't pay for no service. Women be out here trying to get y'all to not pay, to pay and not get no service back. Uh-uh. Mm. <laughs> Tell her she owe me something if I put something on it. If she recovers, if I put something on it, she owe me something when she come out. Pitch in on the party. Ninja, oh, well, I don't know what we doing. Ninja, hey, your family out here let your daughter turn into a skeezer, and now I got to pay? Man, that's pitching on a party tonight. I'll put something on it. I can put something on it. Mm. <laughs> All right, anyway, she tried to delete herself with fentanyl, and I got to pitch in on her recovery. Nah, Ninja, I, I need some services, man. I'm, I'm plunking down. For lay, I'm putting layaway service on that barbecue. It's barbecue in there. Yeah, we cold. All right, we got another one here. This is Jesse Jane, 43, another OD. Yeah, man, the lifestyle is hard. All right, they found her in her home Wednesday in Oklahoma. Man, they didn't moved into some small towns, I guess, where people don't know them. They also found the boyfriend self-deleted. Oh, no, I guess deceased. They got a wrong batch of drugs. Again, I don't feel bad for drug addicts, or drag addicts, man. Get, get off, get off the crack. All right, the husband's or the boy—is it the boyfriend? The boyfriend's employer hadn't heard from him in days. They went to the house, and um, looks like a drug overdose. They don't know how long they were dead. Yeah, that's a cold world, man. That's a cold way to go out, bro. It's a cold way to go out. All right, it says right here, business of pleasure. She got, okay, she up here bragging. Okay, let's see what she talking about here. She up here bragging. So you want to be a brand, basically. I want to be a brand, exactly. Uh, that, oh, so she, what is part of the Jesse Jane brand? Because there are a lot of beautiful girls out there. A lot of them have blonde hair, just like you. Yeah. They've got big breasts. Yeah. What, what differentiates you from the rest? Uh, I think that I'm more personable. I love meeting my fans. I know that my fans make me who I am, and I interact with them. That's me, it's me. Which is why Jane is mobbed at events like this, the Adult Entertainment Expo in Las Vegas. Do you ever say no to a fan when they ask for your picture or your autograph? Oh, no. You know what? Only if I'm in the middle of something else would I ever say no. But Jane seems comfortable in the spotlight and on the red carpet at the AVN Awards, which some call the Oscars. Yeah, she tiny, bruh. I definitely would get her spinning on me. Yeah, I, I, I do recognize her now. I, I do recognize her from those, like, the pictures they put up of her when she's older, I don't recognize her at all. But that video, I definitely recognize her. All right, and I don't know any of her videos. All right, I remember her from kind of, she, she definitely was sort of mainstream. All right, last one, I think, is this young lady. Hit the like button for me. This young lady right here, fair use, this is law and crime covering this on YouTube. And let's play the video. It is being reported that an adult film. All right, we got it on chipmunk mode. Give me a second. All right, here we go. Star was found dead inside of her apartment 
and her agency is calling it a possible home invasion homicide. We discuss the next steps in the investigation and what's come to light. Look how normal they look, man. I know uh, people don't realize that could be any woman. That's what people don't realize. The dark side is crazy. It could be any woman. Like, you guys think these prawn stars look a certain way? Damn, we got 2.8K watching me on both channels. 1,000 plus on the Notorious channel, 1,800 on the Free Agent Lifestyle channel. Shout out to y'all. But look how normal. This could be any Latina. This could be any Latina chick, especially in New Mexico. All right, but, um, you know, let's get to it. So far about Sophia Leone's death with forensic death investigator Joseph Scott Morgan. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. All right, let's talk about this chilling story of 26-year-old Sophia Leone, the former porn star who was featured in dozens of adult films. This is according to the Internet Adult Film Data. Yeah, this one nice right here. That's nice. All right, let's continue. Database. But now it is her untimely death that is making headlines. Yeah, her stepfather said in a statement on a GoFundMe page that Leon was found unresponsive in her apartment in Albuquerque, New Mexico on March 1st, was discovered All apparently right. or reportedly by her family. All right, there you go. There you go. So, again, I, I often try to caution you. A lot of guys will say, hey, a person's dress will d dictate whether she's a good woman or a bad woman. Well, there she is in a traditional... Uh, what do you call it? Trad, trad con dress, traditional conservative dress, right? Girl next door. She has a girl next door appeal for sure. Uh, but there she is in the trad con dress. Does that make her a good woman? Does it make her a bad woman because she's in prawn? What does this mean? The spectrum is real. The spectrum. So women, and she's in New Mexico, Albuquerque. You wouldn't imagine that she was out there in these streets like that, getting ramrodded for money. But um, she's a good looking girl. Uh, she definitely got some cankles down there though. She got some cankles. All right, but she's a good-looking girl, girl next door. She probably did well in the industry, but somebody took her out. They're, they're thinking, the family thinks somebody took her out. Her agency, 101 Modeling, went on to say on Twitter, X, that Leon was killed in what may have been a robbery homicide. Now, here's what's interesting about that. Law and Crime reached out to the Albuquerque Police Department for details on this investigation into Leon's death. Fair use. But at the time of this recording... We didn't hear back from them. However, according to a local media outlet, KOB4, a police department spokesperson told them that Leon's death is being treated as suspicious, but not necessarily a homicide. What do y'all think happened here? I got an opinion on this. What do y'all think happened? The normies don't understand. They don't understand the, the situation. I'm going to think, I'm going to say what happened here. Somebody said close to the border. Albuquerque's not that close to the border. All right. Albuquerque's in northern New Mexico. All right. It's a it's a four. It's probably a five, six hour drive from the border. And it's a main city. It's it, I wouldn't imagine. Now, they probably have transients and people coming in newcomers. But you know what happened? Somebody said sacrificed. Simp got her. NWO got her. Let, drugs. Well, they're saying it's a homicide. Fentanyl. Lace drugs, self-deletion. All right, ex-boyfriend, drug deal going wrong. It could be all of those. Blue pill rage. Cartello didn't get they cut. Somebody says she had a sugar daddy. I think she was turning tricks. I think she was turning tricks. That's what I think. I think she was probably on a website where she was turning tricks. I mean, that's my opinion. Because, because she's a prawn star. But that doesn't make uh, uh, these people in these industries, sex workers, they don't just focus on one industry. They're known for one industry, but it still looks like she was back home. I guarantee you she was on turning tricks. That's what I think. Or if she had anything against the industry, that might have got her. But I think she had like a sugar daddy or somebody coming in and out. She was doing out calls, in calls. She was doing, that's what I think happened. That's my opinion. So, Bad John, somebody that she probably didn't know. She thought she was secure. Somebody stalked her. Neighbor stalked her. There's some guy, sometimes a neighbor sees her doing some things. Or, you know, he's looking like, man, I, one day I would want her. And boom, he, he might have got in there. But I think she might have been doing some turning tricks. Met a client. Uh, people don't know that happens. Remember that one woman in Houston, Texas? The woman, woman in Houston, Texas... Uh, that died 
and they swept it under the rug, right? Who remembers that woman? Let me see if I can remember that woman. She was known as a Instagram model. I believe she was a stripper. And all the rappers knew her. Dies in Houston. And then there was a Mexican guy at the crib. Mercedes, Miss Mercedes. Well, what people don't want to say is they don't want to acknowledge the truth. That she was turning tricks. That's what she was known for. Right? And everybody knew her as that. She, I think she was also a stripper too, uh, which I think she was as well. And this is allegedly the guy that got her. But that's what happened. That's, that's more than likely what happened. And then it just so happened she had 2.6 million Instagram followers. And then all the rappers was like, oh, Miss Mercedes. And they was all, dude, this woman probably was known in the industry as a service provider. All right. And um, even that woman that's had the, be- the baby by the basketball player, if you go through her history, she was whole hopping on every celebrity you could possibly, possibly have. And you could go through her history for the last 15 years. She was on this celebrity and that celebrity and this one and this one and this one. And these women are service providers, right? Because men don't understand that. You, a lot of guys will think, a lot of guys will think that these celebrities are getting these women for free. And there's like, man, it's good to be a celebrity, but you don't realize that celebrities pay for these girls. <laughs> They're paid for, right? Um, and not all, but. A lot of the guys don't realize that. Even the woman said Chris Brown paid her $2,500. And guys are like, Chris Brown don't have to pay him $2,500. Yeah, they do. I mean, they do it. They do it all the time. You know, and they make sure they clean up their stuff. But they'll never tell you and nobody really knows. All right. So, you know, that's how people know them. But the, the normie world would be, here's the reason. The normal, the normal world would not be sympathetic to these women if, in fact, people say, yeah, a known prostitute dies at the hand of a trick. Stripper who was turning tricks on the side. Only fans model who was turning tricks. Instagram model who was also a service provider. Nobody would feel sorry for her. They would be like, well, she got what she deserves. So they kind of hide that. They kind of hide that. So in my opinion, my opinion this is what she probably was engaging in. This is just a guess. And they can't, they can't say it. They can't prove it. But I guarantee you if they go through her phone, because people think you make a lot of money doing prom. You don't. They, them girls make some good money, but they don't make a lot of money. It's not like they are filming every day. So some of them do a little stripping. Some of them do a little touring. Some of them do a little OnlyFans. Some of them do a little side tricking. Right? What was the one woman? There was a woman here. Give me the name of the light-skinned woman that said, that said she was with Bill Maher. But she was a prawn actress. But she also was going to see celebrities turn the trick. Give me, give me that woman's name so I can show you the video of the woman talking about this. What's the name of the woman? She's a light-skinned woman. And she's known, in, she's known around. And I showed a video. I think I showed it on Locals. But I'll show it here. Bill Maher, if, yeah, there is, Tiana Trump. You see me with my name recall is bad. All right, Tiana Trump. Let's see here. Tiana Trump. Bill Maher. Don't be mad at me, Bill Maher, if I play, when I play this. All right, so I'm going to play this just so you can see how common this is. But it's, it's, it's common for these industry women to do this as a way to make quick money. Here we go, right here. Story first. Okay, so this is how I got hooked up with him. So I'm like, okay. porn star, hit me up. Apparently he likes this. I'm, I'm probably going to give it away. Black girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, Bill Maher. Bill Maher oh loves black God. girls. Is it Bill Maher? I didn't say anything. Oh, I, but he's not a politician. She so, said he had a political show. She okay, so he's a got a political show. I'll tell you what, to make you feel even more comfortable then, right? I, I've been a Hollywood dude for a long time. Bill Maher, I, I think, I, I feel, and this is totally genuine, I feel his whole position and his whole shit as a comedian for the last 20 years Fair is just to, to have been impressed black girls. 
That's it. So like he's been out to dinner with with sixties, and it's like well, hey. I lied to him. So I have to, I swear to lie to everybody about my age. So like when I went there, I was eighteen, and he was like, "How old are you?" I was like, "I'm 22." He was like, "Well, what? When did you graduate high school?" I couldn't think of the math in my head, so I just said something. He was like, "Well, sweetie, that would mean you're this old." And now I want you to notice. I'm gonna break this down. So thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button. She said I was 18. She was barely 18. Now, this is the problem with this industry is that when these women get ran through and they then face the consequences, then they come out at 28 and they say they were a victim. And then you're like, oh, that poor young girl. But this is a full volunteer. She's describing something that she voluntarily went into even at a young age and she participated in. It's hard for me to then say, oh, they were victimized. Oh, well, she was young and vulnerable. But it sounds like that's what she wanted to do. Okay, continuing. So I was like, fuck. He was like, so you're lying to me. I don't like liars. So he got real serious. And then he started to ask me other questions. Really? About, because I, so I was getting money from him, obviously, because he paid me for the service, blah, blah, blah. And I, was, I had to split it with the person or give him a cut because they had booked it. Yeah. He was like, what person? He was so mad. He, you could tell he probably wanted to cancel. Like he was, it was the most awkward, awkwardest experience ever. And I, but there's so much more, but I don't want to speak on it. He's a really big dick though. That's what I heard. Nice. So every, no, so here's what oh, I heard. Like him, like David, David Spade. Him. I heard Spade's got oh, a yeah, fucking David hammer on. Fair yeah. use. Uh, fair, let me skip that part. Fair use. Yeah, but, 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 but who does Bill Moore call? Like, did you have a, a pimp or somebody who was just like, hey. I don't even, I literally have, it was another porn star and it was a white girl and I have, I don't think she's fucked him, but she just is like, I think she just sets shit up for us. Madam. So let me stop it right there. So she had her boyfriend, a pimp in the car with the car running, waiting to go. He gets the $30, 30% split. The other person set it up. I think she was a girl. Madam. Guys, this industry, this, this is what they're doing. <laughs> like, it's what they doing. So when you look at this and you go back and you be like, these people are, but when it works for them, they successful, they smart, they entrepreneurs, they trapping, they get in the bag, they tricking clientele. When it doesn't work, oh, poor things. You see what I mean? You see, you see what's going on here? But I just want to say that when it works, they bragging. You dusty, you dirty, they get in the bag, they smart, right? When it don't work, victim. It's crazy. It's, it's a crazy thing, but yeah, man, that lifestyle is pretty tough. Let me see if there's one more thing that I need to share on this one. And um, uh, this this article here, a former performer right here is saying pornography does lasting harm to performers right there. And she worked in the industry and then she identifies all of these all of these things that happen. So if you think about your behavior, let's turn it back to you guys. She's talking about. A performer becomes virtually incapable of experiencing authentic, intimate relationships. She bases her self-worth on sex, which reinforces the behavior. Relearning a healthy relationship to sex, others, and money takes work. Um, we do have to worry about this with young women that are going to OnlyFans and stripping and selling a little sugar babies, right? Women, Young women are going to these things, and then 10 years from now, they're going to come out messed up. They're going to come out messed up. They think they can do it and disconnect, but they're going to come out messed up. Now, your own behavior, it's kind of like when you consume bad foods, it has a lasting effect on you. And when you continue to consume bad foods, it has a lasting effect. We got to think about our own behavior here in every aspect. You go to the strip club, you're dealing with sugar babies, fixing binds, you're watching prawn. These people are not healthy. They're not healthy, but you're consuming them. Um, they're not healthy, but they're acting healthy. But they're coming in with these energies. And then eventually, they're going to crash out. <laughs> they're going to crash out. And then we have to realize that while, while we're consuming them, we're watching them, we're being entertained, and they're not healthy. Well, they're also like food, bad food that is what got hormones and shit like that. We're consuming them, and those things will have lasting effect on us as well. So be careful with your behavior. Be careful with your behavior as to how you're behaving with these people because, yeah, it can. It can have crazy effects on you 
and these things can be negative as you hear. But anyway, that ain't going to stop me from Fix His Minds LLC. Fix His Minds LLC Your is still in business. Too, Just be careful. Because these people that you're dealing with acting like they're happy, they, they're acting like they want to do it, but really deep down inside, give them some time. These young women going to be jumping off bridges, unfortunately. And, oh, by the way, the money don't last either for these young people. Um, I know a lot of these people that work in these industries, the money don't last. Even when they make good money, they lose a lot of that money. They lose a lot of that money. So be careful with your behaviors on this one. Now, I know y'all simp ass ninjas is going to be looking these girls up, but it is what it is. Let me get to the super chats. And we don't have very many to cover, I don't believe, but let's cover them. Shout out to Chad. Tyrone77 says, sister, you been on, on my mind. Hey, sisters, I think Asian women uh, age better. And this is why. This is why. The reason why I think Asian women age better is that most of the time, now, when they turn 60, it goes off the rails. But the reason why is that when you consider weight and weight, guys, stop with the weight thing. Weight is bad. Excessive weight is bad. You typically see sisters, they have excessive weight, but their face looks decent. But unfortunately, men in the community that deal with sisters, you guys look at weight as such a positive because you guys have fetishes. You don't see the detrimental things that happen with people who carry excess weight. So that's what my opinion is on that one. My opinion is, yeah, their face seems to be good without cracks and blemishes, but they are also bad physically. Their physical body below their neck is soggy. It's a bad thing. So that's what that's the one thing I would take away from them in terms of, yeah, people's face can be preserved, but them bodies be looking like crazy. Body be crazy as hell. All right, excess weight is not good. And they don't make good long-term mates. So if you just have a fetish, okay, I will go with the sisters. But if you don't have a fetish and you're talking about actually dealing with them as partners, I go with the Asians because they don't be catching them big ass. <laughs> These people be running around with excess weight like it's normal. This weight thing is bad. I, I feel like I'm overweight. I'm overweight. And I be looking at myself sometimes like, man, you better get it together. Better get it together. But sisters be big for no reason. All right. I mean, like, just too big. Too big MC. Where we at? Shout out to Zero Fallout says, men have been warning women about sex work. It is soul crushing. And there were no pretty woman endings for them. Fast money comes with slow problems. <laughs> Fast money comes with slow problems. All right, yeah, guys, I'm going to tell you, man, pretty woman, I want you to know a red flag. I'm going to give you a red flag to look for. If you're dating a woman and her favorite movie is Pretty Woman or one of her top favorite movies is Pretty Woman, it's a red flag. Red, dead flag, just to let you know. Because this woman has a dream. It's basically a Disney princess movie for women that have bad reputation, they're whoredom. They're going to be whores, the worst street whores, the worst kind. No matter what their past is, they're going to get a billionaire. It is literally 50 shades of gray before 50 shades of gray without the s and m. Pretty woman is a red flag, just to let you know, Ninja. I'm going to just let you know. Stephen D. Pa uh, Pamela Anderson spoke in her Netflix bio that the sex tape with her husband I think it was Tommy Lee, not Nikki Six, but I think it was Tommy Lee. Impacted her adversely for years and had an effect on her sons, which is another thing. I know a woman that was a playmate, playmate of the year. Playboy, playmate of the year in the 2000s. So if y'all ninja want to do your due diligence and go and pick the year, I know her and I know her son and her sons are now adolescents. I've seen the negative act impact on that and her son, right? Because the community definitely treated her a certain type of way. Her school, the teachers, the principals, they treated her like she was a piece of shit, right? Like she always have a problem. She run up to the school and because they knew who she was, they, they just, 
They just treated her like, so anytime she had a complaint or she had a concern, they just kind of just dismissed her, right? And every time people introduced her or they referred to her, they always said what she did. And it was 10 years before that. It was like prior. It was like when she was 18 or 19. Now this woman's a, a mother with an adolescent son. And every time somebody introduces her, they always refer to her as, oh, you know, she was a playmate of the year. Like, like it don't go away. It doesn't go away. It's weird. And, and, um, she, um, she was a pretty woman. Like she, she looked like kind of a playboy type model, but she wasn't glammed up. I never seen her glammed up. I never seen her really showing her body off. Now she was kind of tiny, petite white woman like she couldn't help it she was attractive but she didn't over accentuate it she didn't over accentuate it she didn't she wasn't like running around with louis vuitton bags she wasn't asking for the attention like she was never showcasing it but you know a lot of times i always tell you if if you grew for me growing up in southern california in my formative years you will figure this one thing out. Her looks didn't fade. Her, she was actually still attractive. I mean, she was good looking, but she never was like big lipstick, big eyelashes. She never over accentuated big hair. She always kind of played it down as much as she possibly could. She, but her looks didn't fade. She was still good looking. All right, but, but she didn't overdo it. You will find that in Southern California, anybody in Southern California know this. Celebrities dress down. And people who think they're celebrities dress up. Shout out to my Miami, New York, uh, uh, Texas, and Chicago. If you know this, this is exactly true. Celebrities dress down. They almost mute themselves and hide. Non-celebrities dress up. So when you see a woman and she's got the things out and the titties out and she thinks she's somebody, she's not anything. The people who are they are they hide they try to mix in they try to they try to they try to put a hat on right they don't put their titties out they just be like even the males too they don't be wearing louis louis big old rolexes and and and, and uh bust downs they they don't wear all their jewelry out ninjas that wear their jewelry and put all of that they know you 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 automatically say they're nobody you be like, nah, you ain't nobody. You overdoing it. You overdoing it. Okay, anytime you see a dude overdoing it, you have to go, mm, they got the big glasses on, sunglasses at night, sunglasses in the nightclub. They got the big ass chains and all that shit. You be like, nah, celebrities almost always be dressed down. Every time I see a celebrity, and I, I've seen many of them, too many to even count or name, they almost always are dressed down. They almost always are driving a basic car. They're almost always without their jewelry. They're almost always with a hat. Incognito. They they always, almost always, they don't have, they're not out here trying to draw attention to themselves. Okay, the people that draw attention to themselves almost always are not celebrities. They're not, they're not anybody. Yep. So, um, yep. It just depends on where you are. It just depends on where you are. But if they're out doing normal shit, they they not dressed up. They ain't drawing attention to themselves. It's crazy. Mm. Somebody said the exception is ninjas. <laughs> All right, shout out to Shinku. Shinku, it's takeout Thursday, coach. Let me get a ling ling. You want the, I don't have a thick time. I don't have, well, I'll give you this one right here, ninja. I'll give you this one right here. Here we go. There you go right there. Yeah. Oh, wait. You don't even see it. I thought I had her. There you go right there. Yes. She ain't the thick time, but she cute. All right. That's in Thailand right there. Yep. Yep. Mm Mm-hmm. Somebody said... I met a celebrity, Tiana Taylor, in New York City. She had on sweatpants and a bonnet. It's what it is, man. Yeah, it's what it is. They don't be dry. Now, every now and then, like, like they have nice cars and they bring them out. But if they're out running errands, 
most of the time they just they basic. They, they bring their basic car out, especially if they've been in the industry for a long time. All right, they like don't look at me, don't say nothing to me, please. All right, uh, shout out to JBW coach. Very sad about the prawn stars. I actually worked with a former prawn actress just last year from the '90s and the early 2000s. He says I never would have guessed. She definitely looks different now. Yes, indeed. Yep. I went to school, uh, my one of my community colleges, the community college I went to, and there was a woman there, and the guys were like, "Oh, she's in a prawn. She she does prawn." And again, I that it was close to San Fernando Valley. So I was like, really? I looked over at her. I went up and talked to her. Basic girl, nice. You would have never known. She blended in. She was doing her homework. She was like, oh, hi. <laughs> she wasn't out like here. I'm a bad bitch. Like the bad bitches, whack. All right. They're they not in the industry. These hoes is out here trying to scavenge off of ninjas. All right. But she was just like a basic, nice. And I was like, dang, really? Wow. It's crazy. But they be out. That's why I tell you about the spectrum. The spectrum is real. Like you think the nice girls, you think the girls that are basic, you think those are the nice girls. And you think the, sometimes the girls that be like, I'm a bad bitch, they are the prudes. They're prudish. They lead you on and be like, oh, he just want to have sex with me. But the girls that are like blending in are the ones kind of on this spectrum and wild ride that you would never even know. You would be like, her? Her? Yes, her. They're, they're not trying to do too much. The girl, the people that do too much are always suspect. All right, Brown310 says, shout out to the little feet linglings. Yes, indeed. Yep. Hodge says that former male P star YouTuber who said that all women in the industry are raging liberal feminist, and he made a tweet that said not to date sex workers, and the next day he was fired and blackballed from the industry. <laughs> mm. Oh, man, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yep, well, can't speak the truth in every position right here. Enigma WPG, Tiana Trump's hairline goes way back from facing too much salami. He says, respect, coach, for educating guys out here to not pedestalize these 304s out here. 100%. 100%. All right, Ian Slater says, I wonder if showing these stories would scare future wannabe 304s to do proper things, be wives, and follow directions. Maybe not. No, mm. I don't think so because I think to me, we're seeing women f go further and further and pushing for getting married later on and running high body counts and focusing on their career. And in my opinion, in my opinion, and ask yourself this. No, I didn't go to Pierce. I went to Moore Park. Um, shout out to Moore Park College Raiders. Uh, let me see here. What was I about to say? You distracted me. <laughs> oh, here's the question. What, because we talk about what incentive do we get when women get into relationships with us? But here's the question. What incentive does a good girl have today? What incentive does a woman today have to gain by being a good girl. That, that's my question that you can think about this. Think about this today. You have a woman age 20 to 30. What benefit does she receive by being a good girl? A track con, a traditional, a feminine. A, what benefit would she get? That's my question. Then you're going to see why a lot of women are going, mm. like why a lot of women turn, <laughs> why a lot of women turn to skeezing. Somebody said, exclu yeah, exclusivity was in the past. They're not getting exclusivity. Uh, the men their age are slow to start, so they don't have stability to offer these young women. They don't have stability. stability. High-value men are basically playing the leverage and option game. So they're not getting monogamy from these guys. They're just going to be somebody on the rotation or maybe a stay-at-home wife that gets cheated on, right? So if she's between the ages of 20 and 30, and while she's waiting for their her her reward to show up for being a good man, she's buying time. So she's, she, she got to work. 
She's got to work. So she's not just going to work at the gas station and wait for Prince Charming to show up because men her age aren't marrying or they're not marriageable, like meaning that they're not prepared for marriage. Older men, if she's not interested in older men, that's just out the question. And older men aren't really marrying these women. They're just kind of using them. So she then has to say, well, how am I going to survive? How am I going to support myself? So then she invests in her career or she starts making money, fast money, or she parties. The really the only benefit really is that she doesn't get worn out, right? She looks into the future and say, I want to be the best possible woman I can be. So I'll work enough to like get a guy that can support me. But even today, most people don't live in a situation where she's going to be kept. She's going to be supported. She doesn't have to worry about finances. Most men that come to her are going to want to do some equitable split, 50-50. That's kind of what she wants to do. So my question is, again, think about this. What benefit does a good woman get? Anybody know? Is there, are there any women here? I'm just asking for, I don't have the answer. So she's going to sit around and wait for 10 years, 15 years while, the, while a guy he says, so this is the pro argument. No, I'm just asking. I'm not, I'm not saying they should go be pros. I'm just saying from your position, because we're saying women off your no value. What does a woman get by being a good woman at 18, 19, 20, 21, 24, 26, 27? Are y'all marrying her? No, you guys aren't marrying her. You guys are saying you're not going to get married. What does she get? You're going to find that it's going to be, you're going to be hard pressed to come up with an answer there. What is she supposed to do? We're tell, we're criticizing her for what she's doing, but what is she supposed to do? Give, give me options. I'm not answering. I'm not, but give me options of what that woman's supposed to do during these years. <laughs> All right. She's going to be what? The benefit would be less body count. Okay, that would be a benefit to the guy. That's not a benefit for her. That's a benefit she passes to the guy. Financial support. Yeah, I'm playing devil's advocate here. I'm not, I'm not trying to give them an excuse. I'm playing devil's advocate. People, I just want to see what you guys can come up. Society betters, but that's, that's not a her benefit. That's society's benefit. What does she get? That's society's benefit. The benefit of um, the benefit. What was the other one? The benefit of body count benefits the, the suitor, the male. It benefits her, but it benefits the male. What else? Build together. Who is she? Who is she building with? <laughs> like we already determined men and women aren't. That's a benefit to the guy. Mostly better mental health down the line for sure. Down the line. For me, I think it would benefit them to be good. But the thing is, we would have to give them a reward for that. You would have to give them stable men or men that's willing to build and not fuck around on them. They got guys pumping and dumping her. They got guys running cold game on her. They got guys out here with leverage, just using them and discarding them. For me, yeah, it would be it would make sense to have the stability and stuff like that. But are they getting stability? They're not getting these things. No STDs, that's a benefit. Self-respect for herself. <laughs> All right. But again, the self-respect comes from you. What does she get? You respect her. That comes from you. I'm actually just trying to make it. I'm just trying to see you play devil's advocate. And see if you can get it. What what does she get? Okay, she gets some. What does she get tangibly? Does she get rewarded with a good man? Does she would get rewarded from with a husband? Does she get rewarded with support, protection, and a home? All right, because so we're marrying them. Are we marrying them? All right. So put it like this: Somebody says, "Say you have a daughter. You have a daughter. You tell her to be a good woman, and you'll get what." <laughs> and you'll get what? She keeps her dignity.
Interesting, yeah. Interesting. Does she get, uh, yeah, does she get cheated on? I mean, because that's their que- that's their concerns. They're like, hey, I-, I wasn't out here acting the fool, but then they get married and get cheated on. It's interesting. It's interesting. It's interesting. Somebody, people are saying she gets a better chance. Yeah, she she could get a better chance. All right, shout out to, let me see if I can get this in here. Uh, interesting question. Think about that. And then, or ask a woman. Ask a woman. What does she get? Because, because, because Sierra got Russell Wilson. Put it this way. If you're, if you're a good woman and you see Sierra get a good man, but you can't get a good man, Sierra was a, well, I won't call her what she is or I won't describe her, but Sierra was on the carousel in and out, in and out. What about the, um, what about the woman that got pregnant by the 22 year old basketball player? She was on the carousel and now she about to get a bag. And so she goes, hey, <laughs> hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Russell Wilson took a Jezebel. Am I going to get a Russell Wilson? I don't know. I don't know. It seems like the 304 is the one getting the bags and getting the, the step daddies and <laughs> Shout out to Christy M says, thanks for the great edutainment. That's what we call it. The entertainment and information provided. All right. Anyway, think about that. Anyway, think about that. That would make a good, that would get, make a good show. J cool says, uh, coach, I saw your Instagram clip about the spectrum of women. He says one will be, one will be Facebook, another Insta, another church girl and the place you meet them is the one you will be greeted with. This blows my mind. This is a fact. Now, there are no good girls, number one. There are no good girls. There are no good girls, except the ones that you know or are related to. All right, but trust me, gentlemen, just understand there are no good girls. There's only women that haven't been caught. Good girls or bad girls who haven't been caught yet. So, just trust me and give them some time they will find out how to get in bad stuff. All right, so be careful out here. Couple more. Shout out to zero, fall, zero Fallout. My take on civilization is to be prosperous. Men's duty is to think, produce, maintain, and build. Women's great duty is to produce the next generation of these men. Instead, women are producing destroyers of nations. It's a tough one. They're not focusing on producing or producing any good children. They're not focusing on that as a whole. Eric S. says this morning at breakfast, I meant to say to my wife, please pass the biscuits. What I actually and accidentally said was, bitch, you ruined my effing life. <laughs> mm. Ooh-wee. Cold. All right, going backwards, Prince Simpy says, coach, hit me with the I want to be dominated and goofy. You guys making me dig for clips. All right. Some of these clips aren't prepared. You got to understand how I'm doing things here. All right. Some of the clips are not lined up. So it's hard for me to find and dig to them. Dig them out. Pause. All right. So they're not set up how you would think they're set up. I can't just grab it out. All right. But I might find it before we leave. What do we got here? Damien says, just tuning in. So should all of those 5K calories be from clean sources? How much can it be dirty? Shout out to you. Well, this is a long information. I'm not here to really talk. But listen, you must eat very, very clean. Yeah, you can't eat fried chicken and get $5,000 a set. I mean, 5,000 calories of saturated fat. Okay, You do need fat as a source. Um, and protein, high protein. So it must be high protein. And you're going to need carbs in order to get your ass back out there and get the energy to be able to burn them carbs off. All right, but you can't have high carbohydrates and high fry, uh, saturated fat from 5,000 calories of food. So, and by the way, you can get 5,000 calories of food with two trips of McDonald's. That is not going to be good 5,000, <laughs> All right? You'll be like, I got 5,000 calories in. With McDonald's, two meals. That's not going to be it. So it must be clean 
clean protein, majority protein to build muscle, majority. And no bro scientist ninjas in here. All right, I need money, says damn CGA, not Jessica Jane. Can I get the Undertaker pill? <laughs> yeah, she gone, man. She gone. She gone, man. She gone. And did I get everybody? Let me see here. <laughs> Ninja want to eat uh, 5,000 calories at Chili's. All right, I think I got everybody, man. Look, man, thank you for enjoying this show. This was a great show, man. This was a great show. You made it great. You made it great. I think I got everybody. Yes, indeed. I did get everybody. So that means it's time to dip, dip, dive, and so socialize and clean out your ears and open up your eyes. And Hey, man, we out of here. Hit the like button on the way out. Also, we'll be back tonight. Subscribe to the channel. And all I got to say is peace. I, I don't know if the, uh, the feminists will agree with this, but um, I like to get dominated. I like to. Choked, whooped, spined, <laughs> you know, told what to do. I need a man to take charge and let me just, you know, be goofy.